Hey everyone, uh, Jeremy here. It's Friday night and we're gonna create some art. It's going to be awesome. Uh, I almost forgot what day it was because I did a, a, a live stream earlier in the week on a Wednesday, which is not uh, usual for me. I usually do them on Tuesdays. So I'm a little off this week, but I think we'll be fine. Um, a couple of people in the room already. I wanted to give a shout out to uh, Rome Dog and Kid. Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoy your time. Um, so what are we working on today? Uh, great question. So uh, I mentioned I mentioned the other day, I'm not sure which day, I'm all lost, um, that uh, I think it'd be kind of cool if I go back and revisit some of the pictures that I've created in the past that for whatever reason, I just weren't, uh, weren't that happy with it. I wasn't that happy with it. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I went through some of my pictures. There's some on the wall, some on the wall over there. And, you know, most of them are like, generic uh, portraits, um, you know, things like that. And most of those I'm sort of happy with. Uh, maybe some of those I'll come back and revisit. But I, then I went to my junk drawer and my junk drawer has a lot of different like experiments in it, uh, things that I've actually done on this live show that I just wasn't happy with. So I put them in a, a drawer and just forgot about them, forgot they were even there. Um, so one of them is this poor unfortunate Collie uh, it was many, many, many moons ago that I drew this collie on a live stream and, you know, it just ended up taking a lot of time and I didn't really get it to where I wanted to and I wasn't very happy with it anyway. Um, so I thought I'd revisit this collie and um, I really love collies. Collies are some of my favorite dogs. I'm a huge fan of like Lassie. Um, they're beautiful dogs. So I wanted to give, the, give it another shot. So that's what I'm going to do. And if you guys... Uh, think that's cool then you can hang out with me while I do it and uh we can chat and have a good time um so I'm gonna leave the collie here just so that I can remember how bad it is I mean it's not terrible right like if if um if I drew that like you know day one or something I'd be very proud of it but I think that uh some of the things that are bad with it let, let's just kind of go over some of the things um, especially in the face, I don't feel like there's those uh, tonal values that I've been talking about where you can really see like a separation. Um, it is in black and white, so there's only so much you can do, but there could be like darker values through here, um, maybe some darker values above the uh, the brows, things like that. Um, so I'm just not very happy with it. Um, I don't think the eyes look very soulful. They're okay, but you know, I could, I could definitely like uh, add some darker areas around it. So that's what I think is wrong with it. Um, what I'm going to do <laughs> is, uh, I think I'm going to bring in some color. Uh, it's been a while since I played with like my pastel pencils. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to attempt to draw a better collie in pastel pencils and just see how it goes. So yes, we do love dogs. Dogs are awesome. Um, I do like to do dog pictures every now and then just because I am a huge fan of dogs. Um, uh, so I just want to not forget to do dog pictures every now and then. And then also these um, these pastels. I haven't played with the pastels in a minute, so I just wanted to kind of do that. So I'm starting by kind of boxing myself in. I want to know kind of where this uh, this dog's going to be on the page, and um, I kind of want some um, some gray area around it so that I can kind of overlay that with like some white fur and dark fur and stuff coming off the dog. So I think that that would be cooler than just doing a straight up white paper like this. So because um, there are some white areas that I want to do like around kind of like a mane or something like that. Um, so my strategy is since I don't have tone paper, if you do have tone paper, that solves your problem. You don't have to do this part, but since I don't, I just kind of wanted to add a little bit of gray tone around it just so that I have something to overlay to really make those, those white hairs pop out. If I get a chance to do those. That's the strategy, at least. We'll see how it goes. None, none of these pictures ever go the way I want it to, you know, like best laid plans and all that, but it's it's fine. But I, I, I didn't want to do one of my normal messy uh, pastel pictures. I wanted to kind of have a little bit of control over it since this is, um, I'm going to start calling these uh, re redemption projects, right? So I'm trying to, yeah, he doesn't, he's, he's judging me on my old picture. <laughs> Great observation, kid. Yeah, he, he, he is not happy with my old picture. I don't remember exactly when I did that picture. I know it was on the live stream. And I want to say it was maybe like last fall sometime. I don't know. Maybe over the summer. Um, but it was like, you know, in the middle of my per uh, like, uh, like learning period. Uh, I was practicing dogs, trying to get better at dogs. 
and um, just doing a bunch of dogs. And uh, a colleague came across my brain as a dog I should do, and it just didn't work out. All right, so I'm happy with that as a as kind of a start. So now I'm going to start uh, adding some color because I do want to make sure that I do get some serious project uh, progress done on this. I don't want another failure. Um, so there's going to be like a messy phase. You guys know how it goes with these um, these pastel pictures. It's not going to look right until things start coming together. But I think that there's going to be some kind of orangish brown in the um, in the uh, in the snout area. And I'm also I I, I came up with like a, a different idea for the dog. He's going to be kind of like off to the side a little bit. I think. I think one of the failures of this picture is having the dog look straight forward, which I'm not very happy with. Move my drink out of the way. But how are you guys doing? You guys, uh, you guys have a pretty good week so far. Gotta be happy with Friday. Hopefully, uh, we got got some cool plans for the weekend. I think the eyes are gonna be around here, so let me leave some space there. I'm just kind of like penciling this in. Um, I could be using a stick pastel, but I think because this this face is going to be kind of on the smaller side, I think it's safe to uh, go with this pencil. And then around the snout, to find that a little bit better. Around the snout, I think it's going to be kind of this orangish brownish kind of color. And then I think it's going to come out to like some grays up here, if that makes sense. He does look very judgy, guys. He really does. Oh, you lost power? Is it bad weather out there? Or is it just, uh, I mean, I've lived in places where the power just comes and goes. Like, honestly, here in Kentucky, the, the internet drops out at a moment's notice. Like, it's just the way it is. So it's not necessarily weather-wise. So did you lose power because you're having bad weather? If so, make sure that, you know, you, you take care of yourself. You don't need to be watching this stream if there's a tornado or something. Oh, super warm. Nice. Yeah, uh, I think I think we're up to the 50s today. I went for a walk as well. It, it's nice to get out um, in winter and just kind of forget that it's winter sometimes. Because it, it's February. I'm pretty sure we're going to get like another freeze before the month is over. They're already talking about the time changing in March. Like everybody just wants winter over with. Like just skip past it. We put in our time on this winter. Let's move on. But yeah, March is going to be nice. I'm looking forward to that. But we just started February, so let's not skip ahead to March. So just kind of get some of this tone or this color in just so that I know that it's there. And then I think I am going to um, kind of work on some of the darker areas. I have a black pencil around here. There we go. Hey Dave, how's it going, man? Uh, the camera flickers periodically because it has trouble focusing on a page that's blank, right? So it's confused on whether or not to uh, focus on my hand or focus on the page. Um, it gets better as um as more stuff ends up on the page it's, it's so weird it, it happens almost every single time but it uh it, it's definitely not your imagination but as more stuff appears on the page and you're able to like kind of uh give it something else to focus on it gets better about it It's nice to see you in here, Dave. I know you didn't shut up because I'm doing a dog picture. That's all you care about, right? <laughs> uh, Dave's a big dog lover. I think everybody, let's see, who else is in the room? Yeah, everybody in the room's a big dog lover, so this one's for you guys. If it turns out all right. If it turns out just as bad as the old one, then, you know, hey, sorry. <laughs> get some uh, Get some eyebrows going in here. And then this 
this kind of grayish thing is going to come down into the nose and I think the nose is going to be around here. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of get that nose started. Again, it's all scribbles right now. I know it doesn't look like much. Um, you know, people not familiar with the show might see this and be like, oh man, that just looks terrible and stuff like that. Give it, give it a moment. It, well, give it, give it several moments. It'll take a little while, but yeah. So like, now that it's got stuff, as I move around and stuff, it should stay focused. But I can't, I can't guarantee it. It's um, it, it's because I use this. Uh, I use my cell phone camera. So my cell phone camera is trying to autofocus, and it's confused on what to autofocus on. But it's not too bad. Yeah. So. The movie uh, was good after the storm, brings in a lot of water. Oh, cool. Yeah. Speaking of movies, there was a movie I wanted to go see last week that was at my local theater, and I thought I would put it off until this weekend, and then now it's not at my local theater, so that's, that kind of sucks. That's what I was going to do this weekend. I was going to go see that um, uh, Emma Stone movie, uh, Poor Things. But now I have to... I have to go looking for that movie if I want to see it. I might skip it. They have a new movie with uh, Henry Cavill out. Like uh, he plays like a spy, um, like a fictional spy. I don't know. I watched the trailer for it. It's got a bunch of people in it. It's got um, uh, what's her name? Whoever uh, Ron Howard's daughter is, Bryce, something like that. Bryce Howard. Um, she's in it. Henry Cavill's in it. Uh, Samuel Jackson's in it. It's got a pretty cool cast, and um, it's kind of like a spy thriller kind of thing, but it's it's kind of like a comedy. I think I might go see that, just because, I don't know. Most of the time I go to movies, it's, it's to watch a, like a Marvel movie, so I'm consciously trying to watch something other than Marvel these days. Just because I've been looking at the um, the movie schedule, and it doesn't seem like there's a, there's been anything interesting in the theaters. And I'm wondering if that's because I just see it through the lens of like, oh, well, if it's a Marvel movie, I'll go and watch it. And if it's not, then I won't. And um, I don't think that's really fair to other movies. So I'm, I'm trying to make an effort. You hear that, Hollywood? I'm making an effort for you. <laughs> Stop charging so much. So we got some basic guys going. Need to blend that stuff in. But I'll worry about that here in a few. Get some... Um, Dark areas. Should have left like a little white area, but I'll come back with uh, the white pastel a little bit later on. And... All right. So through here, I think we'll have a bit of a dark area. I want, there's a kind of a stripe going through. This is like a little bit of an older collie. Like he's not a brand new puppy, but that's okay. Yeah, the preview uh, looked pretty good. I'll tell you the movie I am, I'm actually waiting but for, but it's not until summertime. Uh, it, is a, it is a Marvel movie. Uh, they have a Deadpool 3 coming out, which I love the other two. They were they were hilarious. And um, Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool was like perfect inspired cat, uh, um, casting. So when that comes out, I'll be super happy to go and see it. But... That's not until summer, so I want to give some other movies a chance. And, um, you know, maybe give some TV shows a chance, too. I've been been going back and watching the same TV shows I've already seen. And uh, I want to kind of branch out a little bit. But, I don't know. They haven't been making a lot of good stuff lately that I've seen. So, part of it's my fault, part of it's theirs. That's the way I look at it. But this was a pretty okay week. I didn't get as much accomplished, but I kind of like... Yeah, sometimes you just want to intentionally kind of like not phone it in, but just relax a little bit. It's not really a vacation because you're not like going anywhere. It's not really a staycation because you're not purposefully not doing anything. But I definitely like... Because I... I've been doing so much lately that I kind of felt like, eh, it's a good idea to kind of um, 
lighten the load a little bit. So I kind of kind of did phone it in this week and uh, I didn't do much. So from that standpoint, it was a good week. From the productivity side of it, it was a bad week. So like a lot of this through here, it's going to be white. That's why I don't mind um, just kind of putting down a layer that I'll come back and work over. A lot of this is going to look smoother. Uh, I'm making predictions here. I don't really know until it, it comes along. It may end up just as bad as this one, but I hope not. The idea is I will rough this stuff in and then I'll worry about like smoothing it out and making details and stuff after that, which I think is a pretty good strategy. In the meantime, I'm drinking bourbon, so that's all good. <laughs> Random question. Uh, Jeremy, do you have a Guinness Nitro Surge over there? Um, hmm. I don't know. Like whenever I go to the pub, I just ask for a Guinness. So I don't think I've, I've ever tried anything different. Um, so I wouldn't know 100%. I'm not 100% sure what a, a Guinness Nitro uh, is. But um, at the pub, people ask for, they ask for Guinness or they ask for Smedix. And I don't think that they put any kind of like special requests on it. And while I don't pay attention to the board because I always end up getting the same thing, I don't recall seeing any kind of like Guinness Nitro on it. Um, when I go to the store, I'm lucky, it depends on what store I go to, but I'm lucky if they carry Guinness. Like sometimes I actually have to go looking for it. Um, my dog's over here twitching because I keep saying his name. Um, but uh, yeah, so like some of the major stores, they they, uh, they carry them, but Walmart doesn't. Like I, I know that you don't know, like you never go to Walmart because they don't have it over there. But um, for some reason, Walmart doesn't carry it. Um, the Kroger stores, which is the uh, grocery store in my area for the most part, uh, they do carry it, but it's, it's tough to find sometimes, but no, I, um, oh, it's a device. <laughs> it's not like a type, um, special cancer drink from home. I haven't seen it. I really haven't seen it, uh, Dave. Uh, I'll keep an eye out for it though. Like, because you're talking about it, now I'm super curious. I thought it was like. I thought you were talking about like Guinness Nitro, like it's uh, like if you go to Starbucks, I don't know if they have Starbucks. I, I assume they have Starbucks over there, but they have like Nitro Brew and stuff like that. It's just like a different version of it. Um, I didn't know that it was a special way that you make it from home. But that does sound cool. I will look for that, actually. Does something ultrasonic supposed to improve the pour and pint? I will. Have you tried it? Like if you, if you tried it, I, I'm, I'm super curious what you think of it. Uh, hater in the house. Hey, man. Um, glad to see you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, kid, Rome, Just Dave. Um, hey, since you're both in the same room, Hater, meet Dave. Dave, meet Hater. You guys are both in the UK. Hater's over in uh, in London. So, it's a, it's a UK uh, <laughs> stream tonight. Which is awesome. You guys do know that the university here is UK as well, right? University of Kentucky. So uh, that sounded funnier in my head than, than those saying it. Uh, anyway, uh, I haven't seen that. And it sounds super interesting, uh, Dave. I will go and look for it. And I will let you know, because like that does sound like something I would like to try. I'm pretty basic, though. Like, um, you know, I just go to the pub. I get a pint. I rarely uh, drink Guinness at home. It's kind of like, what do I order when I go out? Um, but uh, if, if there's like a special way of making it at home, I'll give that a shot absolutely at least once. Because it sounds pretty interesting. I like technology. So like when they, uh, when they come up with new ways to make something taste the best, that sounds like something I'm interested in. All right, so this is still looking a little messy, and that's fine. Um, let's try to add some additional layers down here just to uh, 
you know, br really bring that color in so that it doesn't look so bad. So you can try to draw like each individual hair, but at this moment, at this time, I'm really just trying to get the color in there and then I'll worry about like details later. So I'm using like the side of the pencil now. By the way, these are Derwent uh, pastel pencils. They come from the UK. So this is a full on UK uh, stream here, even though I'm not in the UK. Uh, This, uh, this stream is brought to you by the, the good folks across the uh, pond. Some of this is going to be white. And some of it's going to be kind of like that gray. Same down here. But I think it's fine. This is like so little white here. I'll just make this mostly this brownish color and then or orangish brown and then I'll come back over it and this curve of his mouth here to kind of stand out and then bring that up so the direction that you use your pencil and stuff kind of helps you um, create form so like I'm trying to go with the contours of his face so that maybe I don't have to like worry about the direction of my marks and stuff later see make sure I'm not and for here and then I think this is about where you know, like the white nose stops yeah so that's kind of cool that's a great question about the the Guinness I'm going to have to go look that up. I'm, I'm trying to figure out where I would find that because again, like I said, I mean, maybe, maybe if I go to like a liquor store or something like that, they may have, uh, that kind of stuff. Usually the grocery stores, it's like, you're lucky to just find Guinness and, and it's the, uh, oh, I don't even know all the different ty types. They have the Guinness drops and the Guinness, um, I don't know. They basically have two different types of Guinness in the, uh, in the stores. I like going to the pub uh, because the pub is going to pull it correctly. I don't even know if that's the right term, but it, that's the term in like um, in a coffee shop for making espresso. It's a pool. So I am going to kind of smooth this stuff out just so that I have something to apply more layers on top to. It's going to take some of that color off, but that's okay. I'll just reapply it. Here. I do like dog uh, doing dogs. I haven't done any dogs in a while. Just because I've been doing all those uh, coffee paintings, it's frustrating. Um, Room dog says I should make some more cat food wine. <laughs> That's <laughs> the guy you said you did that. You can make more cat food wine, but why? <laughs> I mean, you say it's good, and you seem like a trustworthy person, so I'm going to believe you. I just don't understand how. Like, do you put a lot of sugar in it? Like, how is that? how does that come out the least bit good is my question. I'm not. I'm not saying it's impossible. I just don't understand it. Like, um... It doesn't seem like it obeys the uh, the laws of chemistry there, you know? What do you get? <laughs> Come on. Once you get over the giant pieces of the cat food, it's fine. Come on, man. It's like saying I'm going to make some, uh, some wine out of my cereal or something. Ignore the cereal. I mean, I believe you. Like, I, like, I, I guess, like... If you think about it, you can ferment basically, I don't know, there's like rules to fermenting, right? Like you need yeast, you need sugar. Is there yeast in cat food? Kibble by the cake. <laughs> hey Willie, how's it going, man? Hey Tom. 
Yes, the wooden guy has a name. We did a um, a poll during one of the live streams, and um, it only let me put in like four suggestions, which is kind of uh, crappy because I know there were a lot more. Uh, but one of them was uh, Geppetto, so his name is Geppetto now, which is awesome. I think that's a good name for him. He likes it. You can see he's not judging the name at all. He's totally fine with it. He's not all standoffish and off-put by it. So the part I'm doing now is like I, I put in all of this uh, stuff and I'm just kind of blending it out just so that it doesn't look so um, sketched. And it kind of gives me a really good base to like kind of add some stuff over. And um, for those of you who just came in, um, the name of uh, tonight is kind of like a redemption stream. On the left is a picture I did sometime last year. I, I, I want to say it was over the summer. And um, I'm not happy with it. There's a couple of things I would like to improve to it. And the idea is I'm going to draw the exact same thing. Uh, I'm doing this one in color, different pose, things like that. So there are some changes. Uh, but it is a collie. This one was supposed to be a collie. I don't know what it is. Um, so I am redrawing a collie. Hopefully it comes out better. And therefore, I have redeemed myself. That's the idea. So um, I plan to do this with other pictures too. Other pictures I'm not happy with. But I was going through my old pictures that I'm not happy with. And I don't know, they're all kind of generic. So I don't know how many pictures I'm going to do like this, but every, every now and then when I, when I look at a picture, I just hate it. <laughs> I'm going to do it. And this was during a phase when I was just <clears throat> cranking out a bunch of uh, dog pictures and charcoal. And um, I just kind of bit off more than I could chew because there's like, I don't know, too much going on there. And uh, I didn't really approach it strategically. So... I think I've learned since then a little bit. We'll see. So, and right now I'm just in the messy phase where I'm adding uh, a bunch of pigment that I'm going to kind of work with and hopefully make more interesting as I go along. I feel like I always have to apologize for the ugly phase. I mean, it's just part of the process. Like, I mean, I don't know what to tell you guys. For those of you guys who are new to drawing and stuff like that, um, thinking about getting into like colored pencils, pastel, charcoal, there's a there's a part of the uh, the process in which it just looks like crap, which is kind of like now, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. So by getting some of these values in here, I've got something to add details over. So like, this is just like a, like a gray kind of blur right now, but it's, it's necessary to have this in here so that when you come back and add more refined marks, they sit on top of this blurred area, if that makes sense. So you put four get. <laughs> Oh yeah, back to your uh, your. Oh, the eyes have more expression. Cool. Thanks, thanks, kid. Somebody's paying attention. Somebody, somebody's noticing that this is going to be an improvement. I like that. Um, but back to like Rome Dog's uh, uh, cat food wine. He says, uh, so I put four gallon buckets, two cups of sugar, two packs of yeast. So if you got the if you got the sugar, I mean this sounds like toilet wine to be honest, and. Uh, Toilet wine, they usually start with some sort of like fruit juice or something like that. I don't know. What does the cat food bring to it? Like, what does it bring some um, some sort of flavor that you like or something? I don't, that's the part I'm not getting. Once you have the yeast and the sugar, you've got alcohol. So I get that part. I'm just wondering where. <laughs> I'm just wondering why, why, why do you do this to yourself? It is pleasing to see the use of pencils as I anticipated another instance of animosity involving uh, cop uh, coffee this evening. Nevertheless, uh, regardless of the medium, Jeremy, you are the best. Thanks. Yeah, I, I want to, uh, um, 
just so that you guys don't have to watch the same thing i know that some people are into the coffee art some people aren't or even if you are into the uh coffee art you've seen me do it enough times where it's not as interesting i've got to create the coffee art because that's part of my goals for this year uh that dude did offer for me to uh put these up in a coffee shop where people will see them um so that's something i have to do but i don't have to like make every stream into that like um my goal is that by March, I'll have like maybe 30 pieces of those done. And, um, you know, I've got six, <laughs> so I've got, a, I've got a long way to go there. But uh, yeah, but uh, you guys don't have to watch me do all of them. I'll probably put up a video of each of them, even if I don't live stream it. But the live streams, I want to kind of like, the live streams are for you guys. So like, I want, I want to do, um, I want to do what you guys want if you guys want to watch me uh do coffee paintings I'll, I'll do the coffee paintings but anticipating that you guys might want a little bit of variety um tonight we're doing a a redemption of a past doggo picture that just didn't turn out right and i'm not i'm not even saying it didn't turn out right it's incomplete like i probably could have saved this picture I think this picture I'm working on now is going to be more interesting, but I probably could have saved the original. And, and maybe that's what I'll do the next time I um, I do one of these, is I'll pick a picture that I can actually improve, like, the original picture, and uh, do that. But on this one, I was like, well, no, I'm just going to take the opportunity and start completely from scratch, redo it, see how it goes. As you can see, by blending it in, you're already starting to get some life in this dog. And... Um, you know, that's that's why the ugly face kind of sucks, but you just got to get past it. You got to have that vision, right? And trust the process. They, they always talk about that. Thanks, Willie. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, man, Rome, in all seriousness, if I ever meet you out there on the street or something like that, you better bring some uh, some some cat food wine because like that, that is something I have to try. Or send me a recipe or something. You have my email address. Um, you said, oh, that reminds me. I still have your picture that I drew for you. If you want me to mail that out, let me know. Um, it's just sitting around. Uh, I've, you know, like if you actually want me to mail that to you, let me know. But yeah, you have my email address. Send me the recipe for <laughs> for cat food wine, um, and I will make it. And like, look, I will stop laughing about it. I will stop judging it, and uh, I will just give it a try. Because, like, you can't really knock it until you try it, right? I will try it on this stream. I will make some cat food wine and try it on the stream. That, that is a promise. So you send me that recipe and we'll, we'll, we'll do it up right. And I, I will tell the people exactly what I think of it. If it tastes weird, I will let people know if it tastes surprisingly good i will let people know right now we have rome dog saying that it, it is surprisingly good and i have no reason to not believe it give it a shot who am i to judge yeah i i, I will make it in fact I, I know that it takes a little while to ferment so i'll actually go through the steps i'll be like look we've got a rome dog in the house he's talking about some cat food wine i'll mix it up do a little video about that and then once it's done percolating i don't know what the term is once it's done fermenting um yeah we'll, we'll bust that toilet wine out and drink it here on the uh on the stream and if i die from it <laughs> like on the stream well you're to blame yeah so this is looking pretty good i don't like that only one side's done i like to work on the whole picture at one time so i'm going to shift over to here um Working with these uh, pastel pencils, you know, like they are kind of messy. So I have to reach across the page. That's kind of fun. Um, sometimes I have to do that when uh, working with, uh, you know, paints and stuff anyway. So I've gotten kind of used to it. Um, that's one of the things I learned pretty quickly over the last year of uh, learning to draw is how to like reach across the page with the pencil. So and notice how I hold it from the tip. Most people, when they draw, they draw, they draw like they write. This is probably like, it's talk, just talking about fundamentals. Get used to using your pencil as a paintbrush. 
you know, there's really no reason why you can't control it like this. Um, if you're not used to using like chopsticks, learn to use chopsticks, you know, just get used to holding sticks uh, in different ways, be it a pencil, be it a paintbrush, be it, you know, like sometimes I use my, uh, my stick chalk. And so I'm just using the edge of it, you know, get used to using your tools in different ways. Just because they teach you how to um, hold it a certain way when you're learning to write, that doesn't mean how that's how you, you should or would want to um, use it when you're when you're creating art. Break out the mold. Don't don't do what they told you to do, you know. Get get um have some fun with it. <laughs> yes, cabinet no, not cabinet wine, Ben. This is cat food wine. Uh, Rome Dog has a recipe for cat food wine where he says it's the best thing ever. Maybe I'm overstating it. Is it the best thing ever, Rome Dog? You said it was good. And um, and we're gonna we're going to put that to uh, the test. We're going to he's gonna send me the recipe. We're gonna make it on the Jeremy Made Art Channel, <laughs> the art of making cat food wine. Um, we're going to make it, we're going to drink it, and we're going to judge for ourselves. And we're going to reserve judgment until we have done it, because it's not fair to judge it before we try it. Because we don't know. I mean, it, you know, it's got all the makings. It's got the, um, it's got the sugar in it. It's got the yeast. That's all you really need to uh, create wine. Um, I would expect something a little more fruity, but he says it's good. You guys heard it here first on this channel. I don't know. He's got his own channel. Maybe he's mentioned this before. But, uh, yeah, bottle that shit. There you go, Ben. Um, Rome, uh, when you send me that recipe, let me know if I'm allowed to share it with others. And maybe, like, others can make it, too. And we can just have a big old taste test, like, individually. What's that stuff they put in wine that you're not supposed to... Uh, you're not supposed to have or else you go blind like that better not be captured they didn't i think they did a um like a simpsons episode about that where bart simpson was making wine for people and they put stuff in it and he was going blind i don't remember but <laughs> i think they traded cat food wine and mad Men. <laughs> The end of days, you gotta get ready for that zombie apocalypse. You gotta learn how to make cat food wine. Hey Moon. Antifreeze. Antifreeze, yeah. So as long as there's no antifreeze in it. Now, what what I didn't say, but I'll let you know, uh, Rome, is uh my brother actually makes wine and he's got all the equipment for making large batches of wine. Like he actually um he actually has a small winery. Um so I've got the real stuff. I've got the vats and stuff. So if you if it's the least bit good, we're we're uh, we're moving into production on this right away. We're gonna make large batches of it. Have you ever drawn a cat, Jeremy? I challenge you. Um, I accept that challenge. I will draw a cat. And yes, I have drawn a couple of cats. There's actually a cat somewhere on that wall back there. Yeah. Um, second one over that one. That one's a cat. Um, I've done some bad cats. I, oh, I did one for Christmas. It's not too far back in my live streams. That one turned out pretty cool. Uh, it's a cat that was staring up at a Christmas tree, wanting to uh, knock down the Christmas tree. I think that one turned out really good. Hello, dances with pencils. <laughs> yeah, Rome. Um, now, I'm not saying we're going to, like, make a large batch and, and sell it or anything like that. What I'm saying is, like, we'll make up a large batch and we'll drink it. It's going to be great. We're going to drink every last drop of it. I have no idea the legalities of selling cat food wine. So I don't want to commit to that. But we, yeah, we'll make a lot of wine. Yeah, cats are difficult. Um, the only one I'm super proud of is actually that one that uh, I did. Well, that's not true. I've done a couple that I'm happy with. But the one, the one, um, I think that one, the colors on it and stuff look really cool. Uh, I was pretty happy with that because like, I'm not... 
I'm still getting used to uh, painting in general and painting with watercolor and gouache and, and so on. And um, that one was done in that. And uh, I think it turned out really nice. Just like, you know, there's a story there. Like he's looking up at this tree and he wants to just trash it. Um, so for, like I was proud of it just from that aspect. The, there's like a story there. The colors look uh, good. The cat's eyes are just like wide. He just really wants to tear up that tree. So I thought that was awesome. Um, so that's the only cat that I'm super proud of. I, I do find it's easier to paint the cat for some reason than, than draw it. Like, for some reason, I'm not happy with any of my drawings of cat. You know what? Next time I do a redemption one like I'm doing today, where I'm taking a picture that I'm not happy with and trying it again, uh, I, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll take on a cat. Because there is a cat I drew for somebody that I haven't even given it to him because I'm not happy with it. So that would be a good redemption round uh, subject thing. I just love the, the idea of that series, you know, because everybody should try to progress in life, right? Like, you should go back and try to fix your mistakes and everything. Sorry I'm sniffling and stuff. I think I have a cold, but don't worry. You're not going to catch it over the internet. But, um, yeah, I, I do think that uh, a cat would be a good one for uh, one of these uh, redemption videos. I like the idea of the series, uh, redemption videos. Just because there are some pictures I'm, I'm pretty frustrated with. But this one's uh, turning out okay. Um, I don't know how... how <laughs> this is just a weird conversation. You, so, Rome Dog says, You can make 50 gallons of fermented alcohol a year. You, you just can't sell it. I don't know how you would sell cat food wine anyway. Like, who would buy that? Even if it tastes great, how do you get somebody to try it? Now, I'm willing to try it. <laughs> I'm willing to try it because, like, I don't know. I like to try new experiences and stuff, even if it kills me. Um, but I don't know. Like, how do you how do you put that on the store shelves? Like, how does that work? I mean, I guess you just have a, a pretty kitty next to it or something like that. Like, like the Meow, meow Mix has the pretty cat on the... Um, on the uh, bag or whatever, and people just buy it because of the cat? I don't know. But you know what? Again, I don't want to judge because you may, be, you may have discovered something that is the next big thing. Uh, you mentioned Shark Tank earlier. Like, you go on Shark Tank, you convince them. I want to, it, it's tough for me because it just sounds weird, very strange. Um, but I, I want to reserve judgment on this because it may be brilliant. I don't know. There may be so. So if you really get down into like the makings of uh, uh, beer, like I don't know if you've ever any of you guys have ever been to um, um, some place that makes beer. If you if you look at the hops and stuff that they put in it, you know some of that seems kind of strange. That that seems like something you might put in like. I don't know, bread or something like that. I, it, it, maybe it's not as weird as it sounds. I don't know. Uh, Hater, Hater says, I wonder what flavor of cat food wine uh, would be, uh, what the flavor of cat food wine would be like, given the uh, significant presence of carbohydrate fillers in cat food. That's a great question. And, um, you know, I, I misread your question at first, but it, it prompted a new question. It's like, there are different flavors of cat food. What flavor of cat food are you using? Are you using salmon? Are you using, um, you know, they have steak flavored cat food? Are we talking dry cat food? Are we talking wet cat food? What are we talking about here? Like, I need specific instructions when I go to make this. Like, don't just say cat food. Say meow mix cat food, seafood flavor. They, they've got some really good cat food out there. I don't know if you guys have seen that bistro coming. That stuff, I mean, I would eat that, literally. Like probably during like like a, like a if there was a zombie apocalypse, I would eat cat food for sure, and not be embarrassed. I mean, who are you being embarrassed in front of like the zombies? But I am I am prepped for the zombie apocalypse. I I am I have no shame. I will eat anything that I find in some, you know, that expiration date. That's just a, a suggestion. 
you know, they tell you something expired in 2022, it's still safe. Uh, don't take any of this literally, but I'm, I'm just joking. <laughs> don't go off and get food poisoning and then blame me. Well, Jerry said it'd be fine to eat something from 1999. No, probably not. I gotta remember, this is a public channel. We're not just sitting around chatting. I have to throw out disclaimers and stuff. Yeah, so I think I think this dog has a little bit more of an expression and I'm going to continue adding to it. So I'm pretty, pretty happy with it. So you can already see some of these values around the eyes are absent over here. And I think that those are kind of what do give dogs expression. So like people, you know, we smile. There's like little curls in our, our lips and our eyes kind of crinkle and stuff. For dogs, it's just kind of like they automatically look like they're in a great mood. And then it's like little subtle things they do with like their brows and stuff like that. That's been my experience. Little, little things. So I'm going to kind of scribble in some, um, some, some stuff over here. Don't think that that's hair. That's just me getting some areas smoothed out so that I can add layers upon it. I think the ear is going to be around here somewhere. Yeah. Let me kind of, quickly get you in some ears just so that I know where they're at. I always like to set reminders uh, for myself of where things are that I kind of already figured out before I go off and start messing with things. So it's okay to scribble when you're using pastels because really you're going to end up blending most of it out anyway. That's just how pastels work. Pastels are meant, um, so they're different than colored pencils. I mean, they look like colored pencils, but um, for the, those who don't know anything about pastel pencils, it's kind of like a chalky um, medium. It's a dry medium with kind of like um, a chalk with pigment in them. Now there's some other kind of like binder that holds it all together. And uh, that I don't know. I, um, I don't know the, the proper term for that. But you can think of it kind of as chalk. It's not chalk. It's, it's not technically chalk. I, I want to throw that out there because somebody called me on that before. They were like, that's not chalk. Um, but yeah, um, it's kind of like chalk. So it's kind of like a chalk pencil. Um, but it's different than colored pencils and how you blend it. So like colored pencils, you kind of want to burnish or you want to use like some sort of solvent or something. Here, you can just kind of use your hand to kind of like soften that up. And again, it looks like a mess, but this is kind of a necessary stage. Um, Kind of as like an under coat so that you can add stuff above it that looks more realistic then you can kind of like just point all that out and so you kind of create this soft focus and then you come back over that with uh, an additional layer that's like you kind of want to leave some of the the details in that and that layer but this first layer you just kind of want to blend it all out so it's nice and soft focus and then the way that works is you kind of come back over it um with another layer and because you have that first layer in there it looks a lot more natural so that's how that works it's not magic or anything like that um it's just you know just working on the same picture over and over that's the good and downside of um, of being an artist, in my opinion. Um, I've talked before, like, I, I am not like a Buddhist or anything like that, but I saw this documentary where this guy was at, um, uh, oh, actually, the name of the, uh, I don't know if you guys ever watched Ricky Gervais, um, the cartoon show that was on uh, HBO for a while. He had like, a, it was kind of like a podcast. It was like the Ricky Gervais show podcast and his uh, co-host, uh, besides Stephen Merchant, who's a good friend of his, um, Carl Pilk Pilkerton, Pinkerton, something like that. Anyway, that was his, um, that was his co-host and that he, I don't think, I don't think he's as dumb as he played. Like, I, I think that was a bit, but, um, he played dumb and, uh, he played like kind of basically the idiot on the uh, show. So they kind of got this spinoff show, uh, for the science channel, uh, called an, an idiot abroad. And it is hilarious. And that's what I'm talking about is, um, one of the episodes they send Carl off to, um, 
I don't know, like, I think it was Japan, but you know, one of those countries they have like a, like a huge uh, Buddhist population. I think it was Japan. And, um, he went to like a, a Zen monastery or whatever. And, um, they were kind of going through their daily routine and what they had was, um, uh, they had them like cleaning the floors and basically down on all knees, uh, with like a scrub brush or something. And, and you just kind of go across the floor and clean it once. And then you go back over it and you clean it again. And then you go back over it and clean it again. And and he's like, um, what is the point of this? Why why do you keep doing it? And it's like, well, that that's Zen, you know, it's supposed to like focus your mind. Yeah, Carl Pil 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 Pilkington. Ah, man, I, I'm not gonna be able to pronounce that properly. Um, but yeah, so he's like, um, you know, he's like, this is supposed to be like a form of meditation, you know, repetitive tasks that you're not really trying to finish. You're just trying, you're just doing it, you know, just to kind of like focus your mind and, and, you know, get yourself out of your head and everything. And he's like, um, he's like, uh, that's not Zen, that's OCD, <laughs> which is, you know, kind of true. And um, basically art is OCD, you know, you, you're like not happy with it and you keep going over the same thing multiple times until you are happy with it. How is that not OCD, right? So being an artist is probably either the best or the worst occupation for somebody who does have OCD, you know, because you're going to get the best detail out of them. Like that person is going to create amazing artwork just because they are just going to keep working at it, keep working at it, keep working at it until they're happy with it. Um, and I never do this, but some people, I mean, they spend like, I, I've talked about this before, they, they spend hundreds of hours on a single drawing um to get like photorealism and stuff like that that's not really my style but that's the level of ocd that you can take it to and this isn't poking fun at people who have ocd i mean ocd is a, like a serious thing and if you suffer from it, it it's it's a real thing that you know you're, you're not a happy camper but also you know artists are going to have some level of ocd in their work um I don't suffer from OCD that much, but yeah, you know, I will stare at a picture and I won't be happy with it until it's, until it's done. And again, it's both a curse and a blessing because on one hand, it's frustrating. You're doing, you're doing the same thing over and over again until you're happy with it. And, you know, until you're happy with it, you're basically upset with it. Right. Um, but then on the other hand, it gives you the opportunity to just let your mind wander and, you know, just let it take form again, that you trust the process, right? So the process is actually, if you just let it go and you're not like stressed about it and you just kind of trust that process and let the process happen and everything, it's extremely relaxing. It's, it's extremely rewarding. It's the point of the exercise of cleaning the, uh, the floors at the Zen monastery is, it's kind of my point. You just sit back, chill, let life take its course. Let your picture either be successful or fail. You know, it's all good. <laughs> but I, I love that show. I, I, I love Carl Pil Pilkington. He's hilarious. Um, Ricky Gervais referred to him as a, like his round-headed buffoon. Uh, either one, listen to the Ricky Gervais podcast, which HBO did, it did, and then they added some animations to it. So if you get a chance to watch that, that that's the best version. But I'm sure you can find the podcast out there somewhere. Um, and short of that, go looking for an, an Idiot Abroad on um, the Science Channel, and it is hilarious. In fact, just go watch uh, an Idiot Abroad, because you also get to learn things about different places that they go and stuff like that. I don't know how many seasons of that there, there were. They may still be doing it. I doubt it. But um, So this is an example of creating tonal values. I know you can't really see it very well at this point, but I am going over the same area. I'm darkening here. It's a little bit dark here, which leaves this a little bit lighter by comparison. Even though I haven't done anything with that, it starts looking white. So it, it causes, um, causes it to look like there's highlights in the dog's fur. Anyway, I just wanted to comment on that real quick. Uh, Richard Ayota, Travel Man, if you haven't, Richard Ayota, is he the guy that was on uh, um, IT Crowd? Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, because I, I never called that guy's name, but like, that's another one of my favorite shows uh, from out of the UK. IT Crowd is just hilarious. They tried to make a version in, um, in uh, the US, 
with a guy from a community. Uh, what's his name? Anyway, I'm, I'm terrible with names. You guys know that. Yeah, he's from IT Crowd. Cool. Yeah, I, li I love that guy. He's hilarious. He he's the best. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I will definitely look that up, Travel Man. It, it, my guess is that's probably going to be um, very similar to uh, to An Idiot Abroad, which is, you know, I, lo I love those shows where they're, they're humorous, um, but you're also like learning stuff while you're at it. You know, it's funny, but also informative. Um, when they went to Japan, which is someplace I would love to go. That's on my bucket list. I would love to go to Japan because it, I just love, you know, like here in the United States, we have like cowboys over there. They have samurai. I prefer samurai. Um, I'm, I'm just like really into like Japanese culture, even though I, if I ever went over there, they would be like, this is tourist. <laughs> like, you don't know crap about Japanese culture. Um, in my mind, I'm like, I like the Japanese culture. Um, so that's, that's on my bucket list. And I really enjoyed that episode, but there was a, there was a couple of other places that they went. Um, I don't remember where they were, but they went to some place where there was a, a lot of monkeys around, like monkeys would come up and just hang out with you in public. I, I love that kind of stuff. We don't have that here in the United States. We have squirrels. <laughs> basically anywhere you go, like a park or whatever, you, you're basically having a picnic with the squirrel. And, um, Squirrels and pigeons. Squirrels and pigeons have kind of adapted to human beings where they kind of know what they're doing at this point. So, like, if you're sitting there trying to eat a hot dog in, like, a park or something, that squirrel knows what's up and it's going to come over there. Even though the squirrel is probably, like, a vegetarian, they want your hot dog. And they're probably, like, in a conspiracy with the, the pigeons to get it. At some point, the pigeon's going to poop on you. You're going to drop your hot dog. Squirrel's going to come in, grab it, run away. That's how it goes. <laughs> I'm making this up, but it's totally true. Um, that is that is the that is the experience here in the U.S. Eating in a park. You're you're battling uh, covert operatives of squirrels and pigeons. So just kind of bringing this ear out, so I kind of know where it is. Um, yeah. So probably. Kind of rough this in a little bit so that I'm not overthinking it. Sometimes I I uh, I take too long on like a little bit because I'm like I don't know. There's a, you can do it faster is what I'm getting at. Like you don't have to sit there and try to make it precise as you're moving along. Oh, is Hater still in the room? Um, about to use me how mix by room. <laughs> Um, you had asked about uh, Olivia. Some of you guys have asked about Olivia. Um, I just saw on Facebook that she has completed her radiation treatment, which is awesome. Um, she even got, uh, I'm only mentioning it because she just replied to one of my comments and a, a little notification popped up. Um, but she um, she has completed her radiation treatments and she has, I don't think it's a clean bill of health at this point. I think there's still more like evaluation and stuff like that. But I mean, that's practically the extent of her um, her treatment plan. So it is good news. It is awesome. And um, I'm very happy for her. So you guys had asked for an update. So that's, that's the update I got. And uh, I appreciate you guys caring. Uh, and she does as well. I don't know if she specifically knows that you guys care, but um, I have told her. And uh, that is... a. Uh, it is awesome that you guys have sent, um, you know, good thoughts her way. And, uh, you know, I'm not a really superstitious person, but it, uh, I make the joke that I'm a, I'm not superstitious. I'm a little stitious. I borrowed that from Michael Scott off the office, but it's true. Um, I don't know if that kind of like well wishes and happy thoughts and stuff like changes reality or anything like that. But I like to think that it does. And even if it doesn't, it's still it's still pretty cool you know you guys are pretty awesome for uh for sending that kind of stuff her way it doesn't hurt like i don't know you don't want to like put bad thoughts out into the world because like that kind of stuff uh probably does matter <laughs> so 
if bad thoughts put out into the world matters, then certainly good thoughts probably do too. All right, let me kind of blend this stuff in so that it's a little out of focus, a little blurry. Worry about that stuff later. I really want to make progress on, I don't want to fall into the trap where it's half done like this other one. Seems like um, if I'm using um, my stick uh, pastels, you can get a lot of this pigment in a lot faster than these pencils. But in such a small area, it I don't I didn't see the point of uh, doing sticks. Yeah, I don't I don't know what the like. Thanks, Huli. Um, I don't know what. You know, my mom had breast cancer, but, you know, I kind of, like, purposely tuned that out. Like, I, I I cared about where she was at and everything, but I didn't really want to know the details. Um, so, I didn't learn like I should have. Uh, but I don't know what the next step is. My mom's was really simple. She just went in, you know, got surgery. It was over with. Um, but, like, I don't know what the next step is as far as, like, once you're... Your path the re like she she already did the chemo so that's done um she couldn't complete the chemo because of like some complications or whatever that's why they switched to the radiation um i don't know where in the process once you complete the ra radiation is i think that it's just like let's let's sit back and wait and see and then they give you remission status i don't know i, I you probably know more than i <laughs> All I know is that she's in a good place, so that's good. I'm hoping she starts uh, creating more art. I think I saw that she might be posting some stuff soon. I don't know. I mean, obviously, I care about her health and everything, but to me, it's like, man, get back out there and start creating art. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But it, it is kind of um, it is kind of weird uh, when I go back through like the mental rolodex of all the d different things that happened in that story um this time last year i think it was february um she was doing an art show like and you know like didn't even know didn't didn't find out that she had um she had any issues until i think spring so this time last year she was out there doing art shows and stuff like her first art shows like uh, that was a big deal for her she's she's kind of new um she's been creating pictures longer but mostly like for instagram or whatever um, as far as like, uh, getting out there and showing people the art in public and stuff, that was kind of a new thing for her. And I think she only did the one art show, which is kind of sad to me. So I'm hoping she gets back into that because I, I was really supportive of that. One of us needs to be out there creating art and showing it to people in public. Yeah, that's my hope. We'll see how it goes. I really hope that she enters remission the status soon and can return to living a happy and fulfilling life. Thanks, Hater. Yeah, you guys are pretty awesome about this. I appreciate it. Yeah, these are the, uh, obviously, obviously, I, I hope for the same things. She's such a, a cool person. Like, I don't know if I got into, like, all of that and stuff, but we were co-workers for, I don't know, I worked at that place for, like, 12 years. She worked there probably at least uh, eight of that. Um you know, when she came in, I think she would agree with me. Like she was struggling when she came in, like, um, it was a uh, software place, but, um, you know, she, she was straight out of college and stuff like that. And, uh, or, you know, not college, but university. And, uh, they don't really teach you everything that you need to know in school. Like a lot of it, you, you learn, um, you know, hands-on at the job and stuff like that. So it's like fish out of water kind of scenario, but uh, she's smart and, uh, she picked it up pretty quick and, um, uh, you know, because I had been there longer, not because I know anything, <laughs> but because I'd been there longer, it was kind of my task to, uh, uh, kind of like, uh, do like a, a mentorship role, I guess you would call it, even though it was mostly like, Jeremy, I don't know what I'm doing. Help me out. Um, and then, uh, you know, work together for like eight years, at least. I don't know. It could have been up to 10 years. But then she left and she's got a really cool job now. Like she gets to work from home. It's like um, for like, they make these security devices. 
of some sort. It's one of those like fob type security devices. I don't I don't know the ins and outs, but it's it's a pretty cool job. So she's uh she's moving up in the world, which is awesome. Because like I don't know. Sometimes I uh sometimes I like to tell myself that I uh, I contribute to the world and. Uh, you know, even if I'm not doing it directly, like even if I'm not contributing to the world, the people that you uh, you talk to in life, the people that you influence and, uh, you know, I love I love the role of mentorship. Like I would love to get good at art and take on, um, you know, like art mentorships and stuff where, uh, you know, where people are looking up to. That's kind of a little bit of like what I do on this channel, um, because I love that role, because even if you're not creating awesome art. If somebody's watching something that you're doing and they get inspired by it and they, you know, apply it to their own art or something, or they just like what they heard or something like that, and it caused them to create something. Uh, that's like the lazy way of participating in life. You know, you're not doing the work yourself, but somehow you influence the work. That's, that's the best of both worlds. So you get to be lazy and still contribute. I like it. Happy Friday, Larry. Oh, yeah, you snuck in here. Hey, uh, Larry, how you doing? I like to give a shout out whenever people show up. Appreciate the, uh, the happy thoughts there. Draw a hang in there cat poster. There you go. That was the challenge that uh, willy nilly put up. It's like draw a cat. Right. And uh, if you're going to draw a cat, I'm going to add to that that yes, you should do a cat poster. Uh, uh, hang in there, cat poster. Because then you're doing the belly of the cat. That's the best part of the cat. If the cat will let you, not all of them do, if you can rub their belly, you're friends for life. So, yeah, do, do that. Um, do that hang in there poster. Do that hang in there poster. Do you have cats? Seems like cats are a big part of your life there, Rome Dog. I, I took you as a dog person. I didn't know you had, um, uh, I didn't know you were into cats. I could be biased by the, your channel name, of course, but yeah, I didn't know that you were into cats. I like cats. I've got the one cat myself, but I've had, I've always had cats. Cats are cool. You have to, um, what was that on meet the parents um robert de niro like dogs are lazy like anybody can be a friend with the dog dog dogs are born to be your friend um cats make you earn it you know there's some truth to that yep you don't just automatically get a cat's affection you have to you have to work on it you have to you have to uh cultivate that relationship there you go. That's a good way to put it. Cultivate it. Like, you know, people in real life, you have to cultivate your friendships. You can't just, you can't just say, hey, we're going to be friends and stuff and then start ignoring them. You have to work on it. You know, I was talking to somebody about this recently. Like, um, I'm a bit of an introvert. So I like, um, I like short term friends, single serving friends, as they called it on a um, fight club. You know, the people that you meet in the bar, you talk to. Uh, people you meet online, um, you talk to them a little bit and then, you know, you don't have to like work hard on that friendship. You don't have to, you don't have to buy them a gift at Christmas. You don't have to, you don't have to go to Christmas dinner with them or something like that. Um, I like that just because I, I'm, I am a bit of an introvert and, uh, and, and, and a bit lazy. Um, and I know that there's working and, um, uh, really like, um, you know, keeping a friendship there. Like you, you can meet somebody, be friends with them for a bit, and then you guys go your separate ways. Like people do that all the time. Um, you know, friends from high school, friends from college, something like that, and you never see them again. Uh, coworkers, obviously, uh, that happens a lot. Uh, but you definitely want friends who aren't like that as well. You want you want people that you you know all your life. You know, you want people that. Um, you have a lot in common with uh, people, people who are supportive things. They're basically family, you know, you want that as well. And it, it, it is a lot harder 
to have those type of friendships. That's my view on it. Oh, homeless cats? Yeah. Even with the advancements in technology, a complete cure for cancer continues to elude us. Yeah. I mean, it's just part of life for many of us. Um, I think probably everybody will know somebody who has cancer at some point, if not themselves. It's just part of life. It sucks. Um, it is nice that there are treatments for it now. I don't think that's always been the case. It's something you don't really think about until you're like a certain age. Like, I had never thought about that kind of stuff in my life. And she's young. She's not, she's not, um, she's younger than I am, I think. So it's, it's, it's actually kind of strange. But it, it is life. You can't, you can't hide from it. It happens. That's why you gotta have friends. What's that song? Where's that from? Shrek. That's from Shrek. You gotta have friends. Anyway. I can't sing. <laughs> I'm not even gonna try. Um, homeless cats are under protection in the city because there's a plague of them. But, no, nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, I don't know what you're supposed to do with, like, because you see, you see homeless cats, you want to, um, yeah, for real, Huli. The the older you get, the more people you will know. It sucks. Um, I don't know what you're supposed to do with homeless cats because I see the homeless cats and I do want to feed them and stuff like that. But then a case could be made that if you feed them, you're just like, you know, contributing to the um, the issue. Like, you know, they're not out there hunting or something like that. They're they're hoping for table scraps from humans. So I don't know what you're supposed to do in those cases. Like. Somebody smarter than me maybe can figure that out, but I feel for him. Like, you see him around gas stations all the time, around my, the, where I'm at. And, um, and then, inevitably, somebody will run him off, and they'll come back, and it just sucks. Uh, there's some, like, cat sanctuaries in the world. I wish I had one. It'd be awesome. It's like a lot of things I would do if I was, like, super wealthy or something and can just do whatever I want. They all involve, like... <laughs> doing charity type things mostly with animals yes um i i am going to um i'm going to ask her like what's the next she'll like i don't want to really pry but i will ask her on that one because i think she's i think she's on like i think she's on the mend I don't know. I I don't want to call it. I think that like, you know, there's um I don't want to jinx anything, obviously. But I, I don't know if there's any other steps. And you know, from what she posted to Facebook, um it sounded like the doctor basically said, Congratulations. I don't know, she got a certificate. I, I guess the certificate's just for uh I don't think the certificate's for like beating cancer. I think it's just for the uh the radiation bit, like Congratulations. You got a few burn marks and you're you're good to go. That's the other thing. Like you hear about the burn marks and stuff. And are those painful? Like does this hurt? I would I would imagine so. Like I'm kind of a klutz when I go to cook. I usually get burned somehow. And if it's like that, that sucks. Um there's not a single time that I go to cook and there's a pot involved that I don't get burned. But I'm an idiot, though. So, like, I look at the boiling water and I'm like, is that hot? Put my finger in it. <laughs> I'm not the smartest guy. I really, honestly, I should not be allowed around fire. It's just not, a, it's not something that... Campfires especially. So, like, I'm the guy who um, is out camping, starts up a nice campfire getting pretty toasty everything's good and then i'm like oh the fire is dying i need to move this log now it makes sense to grab a stick and move the log but no i'm the guy who reaches in the fire and just grabs the log and moves it sometimes it works out but it's not <laughs> it's not what you should do i haven't been camping in a while i need to go camping 
If it stays 50 degrees like it was today, I might go camping in my backyard. 50 degrees is nice. So you, you can see it like just developing this nose, you know, like the more you kind of work it, you start getting some more definition in there. It stops looking like just a blob. That's just the process. And I need to step it up because we're already at like an hour and 20 minutes into this and the dog still looks unfinished. This is supposed to be rede redemption where we end up with a finished dog. So I'm going to step it up, draw a little faster. And um, be a little, maybe a little more expressive in it. Trap and release on the uh, on those cats. I wonder if like if you find homeless cats. The 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 thing is so like there's homeless cats and then there's homeless cats right like there's like cats that never needed to be in a home They're feral cats right so feral cats you're not supposed to take to a shelter or and like you know they're not supposed to be a part of a rescue program they're like they literally are meant to be in the wild they're not domesticated cats um so i don't know what you're supposed to do in those cases those cases sound like um you're supposed to just leave them be and then, you know, if they, I don't know, like if they just continue to like procreate and make more cats and stuff like that, then you have no birds. Because the cats, the cats then took over the neighborhood and killed all the birds. So it's a big old mess. I, I really don't know what the answer is to that. Just thinking through the, all the different problems, you know. You end up with too many cats. You end up with like a lot fewer birds. And I mean, you don't want to just go around. Oh, and you can't go around rounding them up, all of them, because, you know, I'm going to use the same pencil for this, even though that's really fur color. I'm just going to use it. Get a little bit of a brown highlight in that eye. And then I'm going to, sorry. Uh, yeah, so I don't, before I forget, I, and my point was, I have no idea what you do with cats. Reach across here. Go ahead and get that little white highlight. That's that eye. All right, so that's the finished eye. That looks good, right? That's what I hope that the rest of this ends up being. That eye is way better than the eyes over here. I'm sure you guys would agree. If nothing else, I created a nice eye there. Over that. Dogs have like kind of like eyeliner on all the time. It's cute. These are the things that make dogs cute. I love dogs. Dogs are dogs make me happy. Hey, Kevin. <laughs> Kevin stole my. Uh, Kevin's a former coworker of mine as well. Um, uh, Kevin, meet meet everybody else. Um, yeah, Kevin and I worked together for uh, years. Uh, he fell in love with my uh, coffee art um, uh, owl, so I'm supposed to give that to him later on next week which he's turning over to a co-worker. So that one's found a home too. That's kind of cool. I yeah, appreciate you uh, being in there. Happened with snakes on Guam. Oh, were you stationed at Guam? I didn't know that. I, uh, Ka Kevin was in the uh, the Navy, guys. Um, yeah, especially on a place like uh, Guam. That's like, a, that's, a, uh, that's a very condensed area. So like, what do you do with cat, like stray cats, homeless cats in an area that small, um, you know? Cats are predators. They they go like you leave them to their own devices. They will take out the rest of the like surrounding um, um, wildlife. What do you do? I don't know. New idea. 
No idea. All I know is that this eye looks weird, so I'm going to move on to that one. Meanwhile, you guys can solve the cat problem. I'm going to solve these eye problems. Yeah, um, a bunch of us guys, we all worked in like the horse industry here in uh, here in Kentucky, and the horse the horse world is, is is like a really small world. Basically, everybody knows everybody else. Um, it's a little different in like horse sports, I think, but um, certainly some of that overlaps with like horse racing, which is really like the big industry around here is horse racing. But we were all. We were all working on horse sports. It's the only sports I can participate in because I'm a big old nerd and I have no athletic ability whatsoever. Any other sport I participate in, I would get hurt. That's not true. I was in T-ball once. I was pretty good at T-ball. Like we were, we were like, we were like the number one T-ball champ. I don't know how old I was. Probably like five or something, but. There's a picture of me wearing like a little t-ball jersey and holding the trophy. I don't remember it, but it happened. Now I'm being all nostalgic. I think I had a collie dog at that time. No, it would have been. It would have been something similar to a collie, but I don't think I don't think it was a collie. I think it was a white dog, but it kind of had similar features. The vet examined his x-rays and concluded the CT can, but but they didn't find anything good relief. Oh, sorry, I have to move up a little bit. My vet said the same thing, but sometimes it makes me feel sad because of some bad, uh, something bad is happening to him. Uh, my parents just had a dog we had to we had to put down this year. It, it sucks because even to the last minute he was he was pretty happy. Um, he wasn't he wasn't a lot of pain, but he was um. He was always like a generally happy dog and uh he didn't know what was going on and stuff and it kind of sucked there's there's no sugar coating that kind of stuff like whenever you have to put down a pet it just sucks there's no upside to it these little guys they trust us you know they want us to uh they want us to solve their problems and the thing is, like, you know, dogs get into trouble, you know, sometimes they end up getting hurt or something like that. You take them to the vet, they get all fixed up. They know that you help them. And then, then you just can't. It sucks. All you can do is, well, there's nothing you can do. I don't know. I don't know what else to say on that. Yeah, that's a pretty good eye, right? So now they, these eyes are way better than this eye. Uh, Kevin, if you're still in the room, so this is a redemption round. Basically, I drew this last year and I'm not happy with it, so I'm trying again. Drawing a collie dog, see if I can get any better at it. Did you run, Jeremy? You look like a runner. Um, I played t-ball when I was a little kid, I'm trying to think if I. I exercise. Um, I exercise just so that, like, I don't know, I got this crazy idea, like, <laughs> I can maybe live longer. <laughs> There's no guarantee, but that's the reason why I exercise. Um, but I'm trying to think of, like, actual sports. Uh, my brother did wrestling. I don't think my younger brother did anything. Um, mostly the only kind of, like, activity, organized activity I participated in was through, sort of, like, Boy Scouts, right? So, like, we went camping we went skiing we um we did exercise uh related to that i would go to like camp and um there was like running stuff involved in that i wasn't on any running team or anything or you know anything where i would have done it um you know like all the time or anything like that but i was pretty active in in, in, in boy scout so like you know basically every weekend of the year we were doing something so and uh, I count that as um, some of the uh, best days of my youth. Uh, like, I know that Boy Scouts gets kind of a bad rep nowadays because, I mean, deservedly so. They uh, 
they definitely got involved in some controversy, but that's not the Boy Scouts I remember. The Boy Scouts I remember was just, uh, you know, a bunch of guys hanging out, having a good time, um, keeping active, learn to fish, learn to swim, learn to sail, learn to camp, learn to make fires. All that stuff was like from being in Boy Scouts. So I would say I was pretty active, but no, I wasn't, I wasn't any, uh, especially like when I was a kid, I was such an underachiever. I like just basically, I used to skip school a lot. I used to like phone things in. Um, I think I mentioned the story. If not, I'll just mention it now. Uh, I, uh, I took biology class twice and it's so funny because like the first biology class, um, I took and, uh, and, and I failed it because I never showed up. Like I would skip school and things like that. And, um, it's kind of funny because, uh, I had the option of either taking it in summer school because I needed a biology class. And, um, I had the option of taking it in summer school and just taking it the next year. So I'm like, well, I am screwing with my summer. So I'll just take it the next year, make it up. Right. Um, and then they put me in the same class as I had before, same teacher, exact same lesson plan, everything. So even though I failed it the first year, I had somehow absorbed enough about it to where I took it the second year. I was getting straight A's. I was getting almost perfect grades. Um, and so much so that they were like, oh, this kid shouldn't be in biology class. He's too smart for a biology class. Let's move him up to advanced chemistry. So they moved me to advanced chemistry. And of course, I'm an idiot. So I didn't know anything about chemistry. So I felt that too. So I only, I only got straight A's in biology class because I'd already taken that class and I just didn't, didn't apply myself. Yeah. I, I, I basically slept through my youth. It sucks. Except for Boy Scouts. I, I enjoyed Boy Scouts. It was nice to get out and uh, explore nature things like that. Um, if I had the choice between running and walking, uh, I think walking is probably better on your like knees and stuff. I do a lot of walking. I basically go for a walk every day now. And I, I like hiking when it's warm, things like that. So that's actually one of my favorite pastimes. But running, mm, only if somebody's chasing me. <laughs> Kind of draw them and talk about them to keep their memory alive. That is true on the pets, certainly. That's why I like doing pets. Um, Kevin says, the eyes are tough, but that guy, uh, my gator tat nailed it. It's a uh, favorite part, actually. Oh, you do have, yeah, you do have a, a gator tattoo. I forgot about that. Yeah, Kevin's got some cool tattoos. Because he was in the Navy. That's what they do. Navy people go off and get tattoos. It's like... I'm making this up, but in my mind, you know, you join the Navy, there's orientation. They probably take you to some school or something, teach you how to float. That, that probably makes sense. Um, and then, you know, like you go to class, they say, look, this is how you don't drown when you're on a boat. And then, by the way, we're going to send you over here and you're going to get padded up. <laughs> that That's how it works. That's how it goes. Right, Kevin? Like, it's obligatory to have a tattoo when you're in the Navy. I'm joking. But, but that's what I have in my mind. In my mind, it's just like, you get pulled to the side and like, look, man. And then you say you're a sailor, but you ain't got no tattoos. You ain't no sailor until you get tattoos, man. You know, we'll, we'll fix this right now. We got, we got a gun in the back. We're going to take care of it. We got some ink. Pulled from a squid. Wait, no. Octopus. We're going to get you tatted up. You know it's true, Kevin. That would be a drinking part. <laughs> Everything I said was true. I just forgot the drinking part. <laughs> That's great. Uh, Hater says, uh, kid, it all started when I hired a lady pet setter uh, for a week while I was in the hospital before Christmas. Yeah, you were, you were kind of messed up uh, recently, Hater. Uh, hopefully you're doing better now. Hope you're uh, recovering quickly. I don't, I don't recall exactly what you said um, was messed up, but I, I hope you're feeling better. Got a nice little snout going there. 
<laughs> Other than that, yeah, spot on. Pull you to the side and say, here, drink this. We're going to attach you up. That's something I haven't drawn in a while. I used to get like a lot of people asking me to draw tattoos, especially like when I was uh, younger, you know, there's a certain age when everybody wants a tattoo, usually like in your twenties, maybe, maybe your thirties or something like that. And, um, I used to get like a lot of friends asking me for tattoos, not so, not to do tattoos. Um, I could probably do that. I don't know. Like I should probably do that sometime. Cause like a tattoo gun's not that expensive. I think you can get one for like 200 bucks or whatever. That's almost like a $200 experiment that you want to do. Like for 200 bucks, you go off and get a tattoo and just go tattoo somebody, uh, you know, with their consent, like they have to agree to it. But I, I think that, um, I think that might be fun to get tattooing a shot. I don't like blood. So that's a problem. Um, but there, there might be a version of this where like, it's a simple tattoo and there's not a lot of blood and, I don't know, or maybe I just get over it, something like that. But that's an experience that I would like to have that I, I haven't done that I think would be fun is learning to, uh, not even learning, just doing it. Yeah. You know, why, why do you have to learn how to tattoo? Just, just jump in and do it. How hard can it be? But certainly drawing tattoos. I've done a lot of those and I feel like I should, uh, I should do one of those on this channel just for nostalgic reasons. Just do a cool dragon tattoo or something. Or take a request, you know, maybe you guys can let me know what, what you think that uh, would make a cool tattoo and I'll just take a creative stab at it. Um, I think that'd be kind of fun. I like this guy's face. I, I do think that between the two of them, like it's not anywhere near done, but um, I am liking how it's going. I think that I think as far as redemptions go, this is a, this is a good one. I like the idea of going back and revisiting pictures that I've done. Got some shadows going over here. Gonna smooth it out a little bit. Uh, Willie says, I've seen some really bad tattoo fails. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my favorite one, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna admit whether or not I fell for this. Um, I, so I, I do have like a, a Chinese character over here. I, I'm one of those guys and I think it means love, but I don't know. And I'm afraid to look, I'm afraid to Google that. Um, so that's probably like the worst tattoo failed. Like if you get something like, a a foreign, um, foreign character type thing. And you think it means something, but it ends up being meaning something else because somebody's having a laugh at you. That's probably the worst fail. But then there's also some, uh, just some some bad tattoos, really bad tattoos. Uh, there is a subreddit for that, I think. Um, there's there's a subreddit for like um, I forget the name of it, but it's basically like really well executed, but just bad ideas right so like you, you get like some furniture in there or something like that where it's like um i don't know it's just like tasteless or something and uh but it's really well executed like the person made the furniture very well um probably a good example of that is those um everybody's seen these the um the leg the stocking leg uh lamps it's like it, it works. It, 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 it's, um, it's a piece of sculpture in a way, but it's also tasteless. Like nobody wants a, like a woman's leg in a high heel shoes and stockings or something holding up a lamp. That's just tasteless. Right. So that's a, that's the sort of stuff that's probably a lot more milder than what you would actually find on there. I'm trying to keep it friendly. Um, but there's some tattoos of that nature as well that are hilarious. It's really tasteless tattoos. That's the kind of tattoos I'm going to put on Kevin. <laughs> I'm picking on Kevin because he's, uh, he's local and I, I know that he, uh, he doesn't mind.
yeah it, it's really cool when like um uh people you know in real life come in here i've had a few of them like my dad's popped in here a couple of times and stuff i think i think my brothers have popped in here a couple of times it's, it's always kind of cool because it, it it reminds you that like oh this is you know real people out there you know that's always fun I think this uh, little mustache on this guy is looking kind of cool. I don't know if he looks like a collar yet. I got to get all that mane in there, and I'm kind of running out of time. But you guys know how it goes. If I don't finish it, like during the live stream or something, I'll finish it up and post it on the community tab. But at this point, it, it could be a couple of different dogs. You really need that mane in there. <laughs> Kevin said, "Hell oh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get drunk and I'm gonna tattoo some bad stuff on Kevin." He said, "Yes." I don't know what he's agreeing to. <laughs> like that in my mind, that's what you're agreeing to. Sent you a picture of my next one. It's actually navy theme. Cool. I will tattoo that for you, man. We'll go out and get a tattoo gun. They're only like, I don't know. I looked into them one time. I want to say they're two hundred bucks. They might be more than that, but we could have our own personal tattoo gun. We'll just have big tattoo parties. Like we'll just. We'll invite Ian. I don't think Ian's got any tattoos. We'll get Ian in there. We'll just tattoo everybody. We'll 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 um we'll drive down Main Street and just pick up people and be like, hey man, you want a tattoo? We're giving out free tattoos today. Just tattoo the world. There's no downside to this idea. This this idea is brilliant. It's inspired. 2024, we're gonna tattoo the world. Doing well, but my sterno clido. Yeah, see, you did tell me what it was, and I, there's no way I can pronounce that. That's why I forgot. Sterno clido mastoid muscle is still stiff, and I have a few scars on my face. Back to work. Though. Well, that's good. It, it does sound like you're getting better. Um, sorry that you're going through that. Um, you know, all those healing thoughts we talked about, we'll send some of those your way. Squid. <laughs> Do they call Navy people squids for real, or is that just something my dad told me because he was in the Army? I know that um, you guys all had, like, different names for each other and stuff like that. Um, I don't know what you called Army people, but my understanding is that uh, Navy people were called s squids. I forget what they called Marine people. Um... I don't know if he had a name for, like, Air Force people. I'm pretty sure they did. You know, it's just, like, friendly, like, rivalries kind of things. I don't think anybody meant anything by it. But, um, I think I told you, um, that, uh, my dad was stationed, uh, when I was young in, uh, Cuba. So, uh, we were, we lived around the Navy people quite a lot for like those two years well not not just not quite a lot we were there with the navy people um he was there because the navy themselves didn't have any food inspectors and they had to borrow from the army so um that's why we were there but it that's also like you know some of the more interesting parts of my life like that was during my formative years i was like i don't know like nine years old or I don't know, a little bit less than nine years old i must have been like seven or eight and um it was awesome um uh, because i didn't join the military so uh i didn't you know i would have never had any other kind of like excuse to go on like a navy ship which they allowed us to do that was awesome got to go on the iowa and the uh, nimitz um I think I mentioned on this channel in one of my stories that I got to watch uh, Final Countdown, which is that movie that has the Nimitz in it. While on the Nimitz, they had it playing on like one of their blast doors that lead out to the flight deck. That was cool. So, I couldn't imagine living on one though. Like, the chair force <laughs> for the uh, Air Force. <laughs> 
Uh, I shouldn't laugh so hard because like maybe some maybe one of you guys are like in the Air Force and stuff. I'm not trying to make fun of the Air Force, but that is kind of funny. Air Force. Especially like nowadays where they have like drone pilots and stuff like that. But no, we like our Air Force friends. So like, don't don't send me hate mail because of some cabin said. Hey everyone, I had an accident and my car got wrecked. Wow, uh, I'm thinking about buying a new uh, city car. Any suggestions for a good one? Ah, that's a great question. I don't have any suggestions. Uh, I always buy like cheap cars. They get good gas mileage and they're usually foreign cars. Um, I don't know. I don't know what they have in the UK, to be honest, but um, I don't know. I've got like a little Nissan myself and I don't know if I can even recommend it because like they start having problems after uh, a few years. I mean, it's still pretty solid. Like it, it's an older uh, Nissan, but you know, they start dropping parts off of it and things like that. So Hilly recommends a used one. Hmm. That's funny because I would have gone the exact opposite. So I, I like to get new cars because like, I don't, I am nervous about inheriting problems. Um, I, I feel like something new with a warranty or something like that is uh safer, but that's just me. It's because like, I don't know, even if I could figure out the mechanics of it, it's like cars nowadays are more, there are more computers than cars. And, uh, I'd be afraid that I'm not going to be able to, uh, to fix it without spending a lot of money. So I'm a little afraid from that standpoint. Somebody with like more mechanics experience, they probably would be like, oh, psh, screw that. I'm getting a used car. Um, I would, I guess because I used to drive clunkers a lot when I was younger. Um, I'm, I'm always afraid of like being stranded by the side of the road, trying to get to work or something like that. I just watched the three brands with least repairs, Mazda, Nissan, Subaru. Yeah, I mean, um, my uh, my Nissan, so it, it's kind of a weird story. This happened within the first year or two of having it, um, but it's got kind of like this heat shield on the bottom of it. I started hearing some rattling and um, eventually that heat shield just falls off, right? So it's under warranty, so I bring it back to the shop and I'm like, yo, this, this heat shield falls off. Uh, what should I do about it? And he's like, well, I can replace it, but it's probably just going to fall off again anyway, because that's what happens with these Nissans. And I'm like, okay, well, maybe I don't need it. I think you need it, though, because I didn't know this. The heat shield, one, keeps the heat from coming up to the floorboard, but for some reason, it also protects the muffler, right? So the muffler on those Nissans, I, I want to say it was only two years in, my, my muffler ended up splitting right at like a joint or something like that. And of course, you know, I'm a pretty do it yourself kind of guy. So I'm like, I can fix this. No problem. Right. So I go and look at it. And I'm like, well, I could buy a new muffler for like 800 bucks because you need the entire length of it. You can't just get like a little piece, um, and call it done. Or, you know, I can kind of tin can it, right. Get one of those muffler extensions, put it in, you know, get some of those like little, uh, little twisty things and stuff, maybe a little bit of chicken wire and you're good to go. So that's what I did. And it still works, but you know, got to seal it up too. So then I thought, well, all right, I'll go get, get some of this like silicon sealant. It says it works for like high temperatures. It'll be fine. And then I decided to take a trip out to New Mexico, somewhere around Kansas, that thing falls apart. You probably shouldn't fix your muffler that way. Um, I don't know where I was going with that story. I was just saying, like, uh, Nissans, you're probably going to have muffler problems. <laughs> but that was an older uh, Nissan. Maybe they fixed that. All right. So I need to get, like, a main going here, or else this isn't going to look like a collie. And then I also need to get his right ear going. So let me, let me sketch in real quick, like, a right ear, just so that we have something going on. Um, the great thing about this is like, 
you know, the further you move away from the focal point, which is actually the eyes, you can get a little more abstract with it. And, um, you know, that's what I'm going to do with this ear. I'm going to rough in some, uh, some fur patches just to give you an idea of kind of like a fluffy ear, you know, these guys, there's not like a lot of definition to their ears anyway. It's just, it's just fur everywhere. And I'll kind of fill in some of this stuff. I'll fill this in with some smudges just to get that started. So I'll worry about this some more, but I just kind of wanted to get an idea of where the ear is. I want to say it's kind of leads out from here. Just kind of want to rub all this in. Oh, you wrecked the Tesla. It didn't wreck itself, did it? Like, uh, I've been hearing stories about Teslas, like, you know, you put them on autopilot or whatever the term is, and they just kind of, like, run into a fence post. That's that's the kind of car I want. It's just, like... For me, it's all about the gas mileage. I hate going to the gas station. Or petrol, as you guys call it. I hate stopping at a gas station. I would rather just fill up my car and it lasts forever. All right, so now that I kind of got that penciled in, I'm going to kind of rough in this. I'll uh, clean this up and add like more detail later. I just want to, I want to get some fuzz going down here. So the fur kind of wraps around here and then it kind of like starts to flow down here. So I'm just going to kind of sketch that in. And it's like a mane on a lion, I guess. I don't know. I really need to start doing some jungle animals. I don't know why I exclaimed that. Like, I really need to start some uh, jungle animals. I, it's just a thought that occurred to me. Because I haven't done uh, many. I, I mostly do, like, woodland animals, pets. Um, I think it, the most exotic thing I've done so far is, like, a uh, gorilla. But I would like to, uh, so my coffee paintings are, are basically wildlife, right? So like, I, I, that's my theme. I, I don't know why. I just think they look good in, in coffee. Um, so I'm going to continue doing those. I think at some point there'd probably be some variations. Like I'll do horses and I'll do like several different horses just so that I don't have like just one horse or something like that. Um, but eventually I'll run out of like what we would consider like woodland creatures here in the U S. Um, and I, I probably will want to do some like lions, um, you know, tigers, things of that nature. Maybe, maybe even like reptiles, like, um, you know, get some nice little alligators and crocodiles going. That would be awesome in coffee. But I think my point is, even though I'm, I'm doing, basically woodland creatures now I need to do some jungle ones and I, I I don't think I've ever done any I don't think I've ever done any kind of like I guess lions wouldn't be jungle but I haven't done any kind of like safari creatures uh elephants I've gotten some requests for elephants I would love to do an elephant um but I can't really do that as part of my current series because like an elephant you would not find out in the woods well, you might find out in the woods, but that would be an X file. <laughs> like, what's this elephant doing in, in uh, what's this elephant doing in the Appalachian Mountains, just wandering around? I don't know. Like they don't even have those in Yellowstone. All right, so now we got it a little bit of a mane, and now it's starting to look a little bit more like a, um, like a collie. Now, really, I need to kind of smudge all this in. Again, what I'd like to do, I'd like to create kind of like an edge here that's kind of like toned. And it really isn't working out the way I wanted it to, but I kind of wanted it to be gray around the edges. Um, maybe a little bit darker than I kind of put that in with my hand. That sounds good. And you get your hands really dirty if you're doing it right. I've seen people wearing gloves. I've seen people using like 
tissues or something to uh, do all of this. Get your hands dirty, guys. Come on. Like, some people actually don't use pastels because they um, they hate the feel of it. Like, it is, it is kind of... Like, if you don't like... If you're Anakin Skywalker and you just hate sand, you may not like pastels. But give it a shot. See if you like it. I like the tactileness of it. I like getting my hands dirty. I like reaching in here and just kind of smudging it and stuff like that. Like I'm a kid playing with like finger paints or something. And um, I know that's not for everybody, but I like some people literally would love to use uh, pastel and they can't because something in them is like revolted by the feel of it. But I like it. I like, I like getting my hands dirty, getting all that stuff on them. Awesome. So I wanted that. So that I can try, I don't know how this is going to look, but I have a white pencil. Oh, I got a couple of white pencils. Where's my white good pencil? I don't know where my white good pencil is, so I'm going to use my white bad one. I don't know if this is going to show up, but I kind of want... Yeah, see, that's not working the way I want. So, unfortunately, that's not soft enough to go over that, so I kind of have to come in. And this may not even show up, but... Kind of get like some tendrils going. I, mean, I have to use this stick because this stick is like a softer pastel. So it kind of layers over. And you can barely see it, I realize. But it's important to me that it's there. Just to add like a little bit of detail to it. And then maybe I'll grab my gray pencil. And kind of, you know, get some darker wisps in there. Let me move this out of the way. Oh, mountain lion, yes. Sorry, Lorraine. Yes, mountain lion's on the list, and um, wildcats are on the list, just because um, the local university, that's kind of like their mascot, is wildcats, like the Kentucky wildcats. So that that's a definite, because again, those coffee, um, those coffee arts eventually, you know, the ones that I end up uh, keeping, like... Um, they're supposed to end up on uh, the wall of a co local coffee shop, right? So, like, I'm trying to think of things that maybe Kentucky people can relate to. Um, it's tough. It, it is really tough. Like, uh, you know, I'll talk about this for a couple of seconds. When you're an artist, and it's really hard for me to call myself that, but, like, if, if you're interested in creating art, let's, let's call it that, um, and especially if you do live streams and you do them twice a week and you're trying to think, what am I going to work on? It is tough, right? You can literally draw anything. And then you kind of get into this kind of like choice anxiety. It's like, well, I can draw anything I want. My The people who watch my show, you guys don't care what I draw. I mean, you guys are very nice, right? So like, I can draw anything I want. I'm not going to upset you guys. And so you get kind of crippled by having too many options. Like, you just get anxious about it. Like, oh, what am I going to draw? Um... So it, it kind of helps. Um, and what you're supposed to do as an artist is you're supposed to have like a theme, a series, you know, consistent work so that the uh, the people who collect the art, they kind of know what to expect. Like, oh, obviously that's a coffee painting done by Jeremy or something. Um, so it's important to do all that. Uh, it's like part of the process. You're supposed to do that. But then... I don't know where I was going with that, but like, yeah, it's it's like, okay, so if you're doing a series of wildlife characters and coffee art, you have to sit down and think through all the different things that are appropriate and that aren't, and then you're kind of limiting yourself. Uh, you can't do elephants, for example, even though you know that would look awesome. Um, I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that, but I think part of my point is that it's just hard coming up with things to, uh, to, to work on because there's like a lot more involved than you, you would think. It's not just like, I miss the days when it was just drawing a pretty picture because you were interested in that. Now you now you have to up the level a little bit. You have to, you have to elevate it and do a little more with it and things like that. So I don't know, it's just an observation. I'm not complaining because it, it, it's part of the process. This is what you're supposed to do, but it's just something I noticed. Um, are wildcats the same as bobcats? I have no idea. And to be honest, because I'm not into sports that much, I don't know 
why they chose a wildcat and what a wildcat actually is. In fact, I had to look up a wildcat. To me, it looks like a cat. It looks like a very large cat. Is it the same as a bobcat? I don't know. I'll have to look up a bobcat too and see them side by side. But when I looked up a wildcat, and I think there's variations, so I had to look up not just a wildcat, I had to look up the logo, the mascot for UK, and there are versions of wildcats. They have the little tufts on the ears that kind of stick out, and I think that might make them different than a bobcat, but I don't know. I really don't know. Um, you love this, Kali? Is it someone's you don't know? Oh, you missed the beginning. Okay, so I'm glad you brought that up because what this is, is a redemption round, right? So like I, I, I talked the other day about how um, I, uh, I kind of want to revisit old pictures that I've done and see if I can make improvements. And this one over here, I did as a live stream, I want to say a couple of months ago, I, it was probably back um, over the summer. And um, yeah, bobcats do look like large cats. I, I don't know what wildcats look like, and that's the one that I have to draw. So I don't know if there's a difference. I really don't. Um, but yeah, so like um, I had I had done this one like last year. I never really finished it in the begin in the beginning of the show. I kind of pointed out some things that I would improve. Like there needs to be like more tone there and so on, uh, more details. So I never really finished it, but I didn't like the direction it was going anyway. So that that's the first one that I chose for like a redemption round, right? So like I want to. I want to take an old picture that I did that I'm not that happy with and see if I've learned anything, if I've progressed as an artist, see if I can improve it. So that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm taking this boring black and white picture. I'm adding some color. Again, I'm looking a different way. I think it's a more interesting pose. I'm adding more detail. I'm, uh, you know, making the eyes really stand out. To me, I think... It, I'm not done with it, but I think when I am done with it, it's going to be a lot better than uh, the original. And that that's the goal for tonight. That's the exercise. Hey, Jeremy, or anyone from the stream, I was wondering if you've ever driven a Dodge Charger. Yes, those are powerhouses. They're awesome. I'm curious what your thoughts are on the car and what it feels like. It feels like you got a lot of power in your car. Like, um, Dodge Chargers are great because they're like muscle cars, right? So like uh, they, you do feel like you have a lot of power. I don't know how they compare to like a Tesla. I've never driven one of those, but um, a Dodge Char a Charger does feel like you're you're in control of the road. Um, you can outrun cops probably, uh, you know, probably not. <laughs> don't take anything I say as advice. Um, but yeah, it feels like you have a lot of power. The problem is that they drink a lot of gas. I don't know if that's improved over the years, but my understanding is that they're big gas guzzlers and then you uh, you kind of want them as a second car. So you want a car that you can get around uh, that's not going to cost you an arm and a leg in gas. Dog's over there coughing up a purple. Um, you want a car that will get you around, you know, that's your day-to-day -day car, uh, takes you to work, things like that. And then your, uh, your Dodge Charger is your, your fun car when you just want to go out and have a good time or something like that. That's my impression. Take it or leave it. I don't know a lot about cars, but that's my impression. Um, around here, we have a Corvette factory, which is cool. I, I do like Corvettes. Those are awesome. Uh, we have like a whole Corvette museum and, and so on. Big factory. And then um, near where I live, there's a Toyota manufacturer as well. So I am a little bit familiar with Toyotas just because all of my neighbors own one. But when it comes to like a nice American muscle car, like a Dodge Charger, it, it's awesome. But, it you know, you're there's a lot of money uh, put into like the gas and stuff probably not great for the environment if you care about things like that i don't really value that I'm really highly myself um to me it's like i'm lazy i don't want to stop for gas and stuff so that's probably helping the environment my laziness is helping the environment but that's not my first thought my first thought is like man how much gas do i have to put in this thing but i think like you know if you have the money um, I'm not spending your money for you, but like in my mind, you know, just thinking it through, 
if you have the money, I would have two cards. In fact, I would have three cards. I would have, I would have something flashy, makes you feel like you're in control of the road, like a like a nice dart a Dodge Challenger, uh, it's Charger. Sorry, um, a nice Dodge Charger. Uh, I would have, you know, a car with good gas mileage, some sort of hybrid or electric vehicle, like your Tesla. And then I would have something that's just practical for like lugging things around like a good old fashioned truck. So that, you know, when you want to remodel your house, you can go to the hardware store and just pick up your supplies and stuff and you don't need to rent a vehicle or something. Those are the three vehicles I think that everybody should have. Now that said, most people don't have the budget for three vehicles. I don't. So, um, but in a perfect world, those are the three vehicles that in my, in my fantasy world, in my fantasy car picks, <laughs> the, the, the three vehicles I would have. I would have, what kind of muscle car? Uh, I've always been uh, partial to like the Ford Mustang, but not just a Ford Mustang, one of the old classic Ford Mustang. That, that's my dream car. Like if I was going to get like just a muscle car, um, one of those 1965 Ford Mustangs, that's always been my dream car. I, I will probably never own one. Um, but bucket list item right i just like the look of them they're so sleek they're so um classy um yeah so that would be on my list of like awesome cars so i would have that and then i would probably have i don't know like a tesla or it doesn't even have to be a tesla just some sort of um eco and like economic car where it's like um good gas mileage you know, like you go on some long trip, like the United States is pretty big. So we like to take road trips sometimes. Um, you want a nice road trip car. And then you've got your, your actual vehicle for getting things done. You know, your neighbor needs to uh, move something. You got a truck. Your, your buddy calls you up and says, look, I got kicked out of my apartment. Landlord threw all my crap out on the street. Can you come and pick it up? You got your truck. So I'm, I'm liking this. I think, obviously, I need to fill this in before I'm done. So we're going over the two hours. I don't know, like, are you guys are you guys good? You you good to uh, hang out for a little bit? Um, I like to keep them around two hours for your guys' sake. I don't mind sitting here drawing and, you know, letting it go a little bit longer if you guys don't. But I want to be respectful of your time. So I'll just assume you guys don't mind. Oh, okay, Huli's <laughs> actually taking off. All right, bye, Huli. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably going to call it um, pretty soon myself. Maybe, maybe uh, I don't know, like another half hour or something like that, just to see if I can get this main done, and then um, I'll finish it up uh, kind of like offline. But, you know, redemption efforts being what they are, I kind of want it to look better than this picture before I call it done for the night. And I'm really close. Like, I just need to fill in this area and then kind of, like, spruce up some areas. And then the rest is just, like, touch-ups and details and so on. As far as, a, like, a, I wouldn't call this, like, a finished piece. But as far as, like, a, a nice sketch, certainly better than the original. Got a lot of good bones to it. Hey, Crump. Yeah, it is a weird-looking old man. Um... <laughs> Something happened to him. I don't know. Got bit by a wolf or something. I would love to be here for an extra hour. Oh, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll hang out as long as you guys do. I ain't got nowhere to be. Um, even my weekend plans are kind of sparse. You know, I, I was thinking about maybe going to go see a movie, but the movie I wanted to go see isn't playing at my local theater anymore, which means I have to, you know drive 15 minutes which is just like i don't know a deal breaker it's just too much work uh so i don't know what my plans are i need to go out to the uh, art store and pick up some supplies this weekend but that's pretty sad that that's the highlight of my weekend i'm gonna go to the art supplies store and pick up some stuff i need to for my copy art to protect my copy art and because i am giving um yeah all right cool kevin um, to give away my copy art to actual people, uh, I feel like I need to protect them. So I do need to go down to the 
the art store and pick up some uh, clear coat uh, UV stuff so that, you know, like if it's hung in direct sunlight, I want to make sure that it's protected. And then as long as it's framed and behind glass, it's, it should be fine. But also, you know, like sometimes things get muggy and things like that. So I, I want to put in like a, a moisture protection. So some UV clear coat. I went looking at the local stores. They didn't have them. So I need to actually go to the actual art supply store. That That's, that's my weekend. <laughs> it's pretty lame. And then I've got I've got some projects and stuff I need to work on um, that are completely unrelated, like uh, some programming projects and things around the house, honeydew lists, things like that. Got a Dodge Ram twenty five hundred. <laughs> this one can smell a lot of hot dog. Yeah, that was Crump's joke about the old man. Yeah could fit at least like i don't know a couple packages of hot dogs underneath that fur send my uh address oh cool yeah uh I'll, i will send that picture out for you buddy uh it's just been sitting up here looking for a home so i'm glad that uh glad that you're settled so that i've got a place to send it yeah uh drawing rum dog that was that was uh that's certainly my pleasure. If you guys hear some weird noises, my dog's over here drinking some water. That is not me. All right, so over here on this side, again, with the uh, little wisps of hair, you can kind of see it if you're in person. It kind of a little bit shows up on camera. But these sort of things layered over, that's why I wanted to kind of get that gray in there so that this had something to layer over. That this particular dog has like a lot of dark through, you know, this top part, and then it kind of comes out into like little white wisps. Uh, and I like that kind of thing because it kind of kind of looks cool, you know. It kind of has like a little halo effect around it, which is pretty cool. But unfortunately, my uh, he. So this is Bear. Say hi, any people. We're not done with the stream yet. I'm I'm paying attention to a collie. It's not you, sorry. She gets so jealous. Yeah, this uh this collie I think has like a lot more expression in his face. Thank you, uh, kid. I appreciate that. Yeah. So I feel pretty good about it. You know, it's still not perfect. I uh, I think I can. Well, don't drink so fast. Um, it's still not perfect. I think that, um, uh, I think if I spent a lot of time on it, it, I could get it looking really, really nice. I just want it to look better than the original. I'm a man of modest goals. Well, I look better than the original. I'm happy. But there's certainly like plenty to work with. Once you get in these kind of layers, it's just like adding additional, like, um, building up from there. So like, I've got, I've got the basics of the dog in there. I've got him laid out. He's not going to move any. Uh, I think all of that's good. Um, once you're here, then it becomes fun because then you're literally putting in layers, you're adding more depth and, and all that stuff. So that, that's always nice. So get some, some wisps coming down through here. And then this is one of those things that could just like be never ending. Like at some point you got to call it done, but really you can just continue building layers. Now there is a point like, you know, from a technical standpoint, there is a uh, point where the pa tooth of the paper stops holding the powder in it. Um, that's uh, one of the, uh, the issues with uh, pastels. You have to be conscious of like what sort of substrate, I guess they call it, uh, you're using. And you kind of have to plan that in advance. So I knew that I'm not going to be adding a bunch of layers to this dog. So I didn't do any kind of prep work on the paper where I was adding to, to it. Um, there's special paper for pastels. You can get, it's called pastel mat. And that's got a, like a lot of tooth to it. You can, I don't know how many layers, but you can build up several, several layers on, on top of that. I knew that this would be just like a couple of layers. So I wasn't too worried about it. And, um, but I've got I've got some layers I can still put into this uh, with the tooth on this paper. I do like using this paper with uh, with simple pastel pictures. 
um, because it, it ends up, I, I don't know what it is about this paper. It's just simple mixed media paper, but it, it seems to have like a, a decent amount of tooth to it where for simple pictures where you're not doing really complex like uh, layering, it seems to be perfect, actually. I like it just for simple uh, drawings like this. This isn't for a client. This isn't for, you know, somebody who commissioned it or anything like that. It's just uh, me having fun um, challenging my past self to a drawing match. I think I'm winning. Um, so I didn't put like a lot of thought into the paper, but those are the type of concerns that you might have when choosing paper. Generally speaking, use pastel mat for like pastel pictures. It, it'll save you a lot of grief. But it's going to cost you a little bit more. Uh, I don't remember what the going rate is for pastel mat, but probably like a dollar per page or something, which isn't much. But you know, like if you go up and buy a big set of it, it could it could start adding up. Art supplies are just ex crazy expensive, like even paper. You would think paper would be cheap, but if you get the right kind of paper, it can it can be a little bit costly. Costly, costly. I don't think that's a word. I am glad that you guys forgive me when I misspeak because I do that a lot. It it really helps that you guys don't make me self conscious over the things I, I say. I I do drink while I'm on this show, so I am going to misspeak every now and then. Plus, I ramble a lot because, honestly, if you guys ever try to fill two hours worth of conversation and you're not actually talking to somebody in person, you ramble. Hopefully, guys, hopefully that doesn't annoy you guys. Um, since Kevin knows me in real life, he could tell you, like, I do talk a lot sometimes anyway. Like, I get hopped up on coffee and I just ramble on. That's That's normal. That is my authentic self. Let's see, what did I miss in here? Very pretty. Thank you. Um, haters still car shopping. <laughs> 55,000 pounds. Wow. Uh, in the U.S., I don't know if somebody answered that, but yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, cars are just crazy expensive anyway. Oh. That's another reason why I like my Nissan. You know, it's it's not comparatively expensive. I hate, I just hate spending money. I hate spending money. Oh, I hate spending money. Like the worst thing that the world can do to me is increase inflation because I hate spending money. Looks pretty good. Yep. I like, um, I like hoarding money. <laughs> hoarding money is fun. I like watching it pile up in the bank and then disappear. I don't know. Comparatively, I don't really, you know, I don't do a lot of the things that people do. Like I drink at home. <laughs> I like drinking at home. I don't need to go to bar. I, I still go to bars, but, um, you know, my go-to, my go-to time is usually at home. When I do go out, I try to keep it inexpensive. I enjoy experiences, right? And a lot of times experiences don't cost as much as stuff, right? So like, I would rather go and spend money, you know, visiting someplace uh, than buying, I don't know, like new furniture for my house or something like that. I will, I will make that furniture last. I will buy furniture maybe once to 10 years and get every last breath out of that furniture before I go off and buy new furniture. But that's just me, you know, like everybody's different. It's just for me, I've always learned to, um, I've always thought like, you never know what's going to come your way. So, um, you know, why, why, uh, why go off and just blow all your money on uh, frivolous stuff to me it's frivolous. I don't know. Other people, they, it's really important. So when it comes to cars, <laughs> which is what you guys were talking about, uh, cheap is actually uh, is something that I'm interested in. Like, I'd rather have a cheap car than a flashy car. 
But then I'm not out there trying to pick up chicks or anything like that. Uh, I'm not out there trying to impress anybody. You know, if somebody doesn't like my car, they can go screw themselves. I don't care. Like, you ain't got to drive it. I've got to drive it. And I got to put gas in it. So if you're putting gas in my car, then you can, uh, then I'll go off and get a flashy car. I don't care about that kind of stuff. That's just not me. That's it. If I had a billion bucks or something, yeah, I would get something cool. Uh, I'm drinking bourbon, Kevin. Uh, you might know this. This is from that. Uh, this is the um, uh, 1776 from the uh, uh, Pepper Distillery. It's pretty good. I like that stuff. Seven. Yeah, I think that's what. It's, uh, I don't know. I don't have the bottle in front of me. It's it's one of those revolutionary <laughs> dates. But I, I do like their bourbon. I don't know how you feel about that, Kevin, but like um, the James E. Pepper Distillery, I like their bourbon. Whenever I'm down there, I pick up some. Or I try to. I try to remember to. I don't have like a huge bourbon collection. I, I kind of have my go-to uh, drinks. Still looking for coffee, Archer? I did do coffee. So in, in my pile of crappy art, I did find a picture where I tried to do Archer and it looks bad. So that might be a good redemption round, uh, kid. I might draw my cat Archer as part of the uh, revisiting old pictures that I don't like. Which I think is a good series that like, you know, I'm not the only person on YouTube who does like uh, live streams doing things. I think everybody should... Um, maybe other people do. I don't know. I don't, I don't watch a ton of them, but I think it's important for artists to go back and kind of revisit their work and see if they've progressed and stuff, especially if you're like me, which is, you know, I am, I'm specifically a guy trying to learn, uh, to, to be better at this stuff. Like this is all like, this is one really long pra practice session for me. Uh, so if you're that guy, yeah, you should definitely revisit some of your work and see if you can um, squeeze some uh, improvement out of it. Because, like, how do you how do you measure that you were successful in in the goal? Again, I keep coming back to it because it's it's true. This all started from a New Year's resolution last year, where I'm like, I'm just going to be more creative. I'm going to try and see what comes of it. My first attempts they weren't all that great, uh, but I stuck with it. I feel like I'm getting better. But how do you know you're getting better if you don't measure it, if you don't go back and review, right? That's an important part of the process, you know, and, which is basically training yourself, you know. If you're going to train yourself, you need some sort of metric for progress. And the metric in this case is, you know, you, you have to review your old work. You have to look at it, evaluate it, see what, what you didn't do right, and then, you know, try again. And then maybe this is just number two, and there's a third one where I try to improve this one next year or something like that. Oh, a four roses single barrel. Yes, nice. Oh, yeah, I, I forget it's Friday night. Of course, Kevin has a glass of bourbon tonight. That's awesome. Yeah. Yep. Um, so I was born in Kentucky. I was born at Fort Knox. Um, but because my dad was in the military, we moved around a lot. So I don't consider myself a Kentucky native. Uh, Cabin is a Kentucky native. He's a Kentucky guy through and through. Uh, whatever that means. I don't, I don't know what that means. I'm just noting it. Uh, so Cabin, Cabin's the, uh, the guy who knows all about the horses. He knows all about the bourbons. He knows all about like Kentucky culture, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're actually a Kentucky Colonel, which is basically what Colonel Sanders was. Um, I still don't know what that means, but like, apparently that's something. Um, so yeah, uh, Kevin's definitely a, a Kentucky, a Kentucky gentleman. He's a cool guy. There's a, a short list of people that I really think are cool people and Kevin's on it. But don't tell Kevin that, because, like, if you tell Kevin that, it'll go to his head. So I'm glad that this is a private channel where I'm just talking to you guys and he, he can't hear it.
but no, <laughs> I'm just joking. It's, it's, it's totally true. Um, I don't know if I'll live in Kentucky all my life. Uh, I enjoy it now, but like there's other places I'd like to give a shot to, but I picture Kevin being here forever. He, he's a Kevin, uh, he's a Kentucky kind of guy. Cars became an unusual passion of mine thanks to my Muslim father's influence. Sadly, I cannot possibly buy the ones he owns. I can only imagine. I'm sure that they're good. And uh, thanks very much, uh, Kevin, for the bourbon. Yeah, uh, Kevin's actually one of the people I go to for uh, bourbon suggestions. Um. He recommended a good go-to bourbon. I don't know if he even remembers this back in the day, but I used to drink that. Like, I haven't drunk it, uh, drank that for a while, but that used to be my go-to bourbon whenever I just wanted to, like, you know, grab some bourbon. I didn't really care the taste or anything like that. I was just looking for a cheap go-to day-to-day bourbon. I don't drink day-to-day, -day, but, like, I call it my go-to day-to-day bourbon because it's, like, what I would reach for if I didn't want to, if I, uh, if I didn't want to get into any kind of expensive stuff. And um, it, it was that benchmark. I don't know if you remember that. That That is a nice, uh, cheap bourbon. Um, it's a surprisingly smooth bourbon. I, I don't know all the different like adjectives to give to it, but it, it, if you're just going to get a bourbon just because you like bourbon um, and you're not trying to like buy a status symbol or something like that, you're not, you're not spending your entire pay check on some pappies or, or something like that. Um, benchmark's good. And then that, um, James E. Pepper, uh, bourbon, it's not that much more expensive. And there's some others in that price range, like the $30 a bottle price range. That's what I would consider go to, uh, something more expensive than that. I would probably say, well, that's a special occasion bourbon. You know, that, that's what you mix with your eggnog at Christmas or, you know, you're entertaining guests and stuff and they're like bourbon connoisseurs and they want to try all the different bourbons. You might break that out, but if you're just at home drinking by yourself and you're on like live streaming, if you're live streaming art, Benchmark is the best. How's that for a yeah, commercial? When you're doing art on YouTube, drink Benchmark. And don't get it all over your picture. Now, um, $30 is a bottle range, roughly, you know. Uh, things are more expensive now. Probably like up into $50. That's your uh, that's your go-to bourbon price, and then it goes up from there. It goes up a lot more from there. Uh, I mentioned this before, and it, I I'm, I'm think it's true. I'm pretty sure it's true. Bourbon used to be the poor man's drink. I mean, it used to be the stuff that you know people drink because they couldn't afford proper whiskey. Um, it's it's amazing how much uh, bourbon has changed over the years into like a full-blown industry where you know celebrities want to get that pappy and stuff and they corner the market on it so common folks can't buy it and buy up all the stock and it gets traded like a freaking commodity like like the uh, stock market or something like that it's nuts um i don't know if you guys ever watch documentaries on netflix i think it was on netflix but they have the uh, i think it's called the pappy heist there's a documentary about the uh, this guy who who made like millions stealing bourbon out of like a distillery and selling it kind of like on the black market. That was like right down the street from where I live. Like uh, that was over in Frankfurt, I think. And um, it's a, it's just an amazing story uh, about where bourbon's gotten to, you know, where where a guy can make millions of dollars just basically taking bourbon out of the back door at his job. Which, you know, he brought up in the documentary that, you know, it used to be, yeah, they just let you take it because they, they didn't have a, they didn't value it as much as, it's almost like, so my first job was working at Kentucky Fried Chicken of all places, and um, they let us take the chicken home at the end of the night, the chicken that didn't sell. And, uh, of course, we started kind of manipulating that a little bit where we would throw on a pile of chicken before closing just to make sure that there was chicken to take home. But that's kind of how the bourbon used to be, according to this guy. And um, 
you know, like, yeah, you, you were allowed to take a bottle home or something like that. It was part of job perk or something like that. Well, this guy was taking bottles home and then started taking barrels home. And next thing you know, he's got a million dollars and, uh, basically, basically for stolen bourbon. Oh, you probably can't get bitch more out of it. Oh man, that, that screws up my commercial, man. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I don't know what's on the shelves outside of, uh, Kentucky. Four roses. That, that that's a good solid choice. They they sell that stuff everywhere. That's the kind of bourbon I drink if I'm at a bar and I want an old fashioned and the guy asks me what bourbon I want. Oh I will probably say four roses just because I don't know the difference and I know they have it. Um and I don't want to put like a lot of thought into it. Four roses is a good solid choice for that. So that's probably what I would say. And I know that they're going to have it. They're going to have Four Roses. They're going to have Maker's Mark. They're going to have all the, uh, all of that kind of stuff. And I don't have to ask them what they've got. Now, if I'm lucky, I'll go to a bar and I'll ask for like an old fashioned and they'll just make it. I don't have to put any thought into it because I suck at decision making. Uh, I mentioned before, I am the kind of guy who goes into Baskin Robbins and ends up getting vanilla because he's overwhelmed by too many options. So it's nice to have a nice go-to drink when you're a person like me who's a little crazy and has trouble deciding what he wants on the spot when somebody puts him under pressure. Uh, what kind of bourbon do you want, sir? I don't know. Stop by badgering me. That's how it is. Yeah, I mean, that's a real thing. Like, too many, too many options. It just breaks me down. But that's why you need a person who's a connoisseur of bourbon that you can ask. You know, who, who knows? Like an expert on it. That's why I defer to others. I don't have to think about it. Uh, Kevin, you got a request here. Hater, uh, who I don't know if you were paying attention. He lives in the UK, so you have to keep that in mind. Oh, bye, kid. Yeah, I, I'm probably going to actually wrap this up soon, but. Um, it's going to look more or less like this. And if you compare it, I think it's an improvement. So this one to me doesn't look like a collie. I don't know where I was going with it. It's got some collie elements in it. This one to me feels like a lassie dog. So have a good one, kid. Sorry it's running so late. I'll probably wrap it up here before too long. But uh, check the uh, community tab tomorrow to see if I have uh, uh, made any last minute changes to it and things like that. Appreciate you uh, stopping in always. That's why I like to keep it around two hours. People have the expectation that it'll be two hours, so they kind of block it off and stuff. And that's that's part of the um, the bit about like respecting, you know, the viewers because like I think it's awesome that you guys watch. So whatever I can do to make it easier for you guys, and uh, nobody likes to miss out on anything. So like it, it, it's a uh, it's different if I like work on it outside the live stream, but for some reason, um, folks like to catch every minute of the live stream, which is awesome. It is awesome. And for those of you out in the world who haven't subscribed, I appreciate that kind of stuff. It's so that, you know, like you hit that notification thing, you'll know, like the next time I do a live stream, if you're really totally new and you're just lurking and you haven't commented or, or whatever, you know, reach out. I'm, I, uh, I love to read the comments. I try to respond to all of them. I, I think I do respond to every single one of them. Um, so, you know, reach out, make a friend. Uh, I don't have a ton of subscribers. So like, you know, your comment, I will definitely pay attention to. Uh, it, I'm not the type of channel where I get a million different comments and uh, yours goes uh, ignored. So if you have any questions about like what I do or anything like that, like ways to improve things, Hey, if I don't know the answer, I'll find out for you. But uh, I appreciate that kind of stuff. It, it makes me feel like I'm uh, I'm doing good works in the world. So definitely reach out. And obviously, if you haven't subscribed, I appreciate that. And you know,
But yeah, I think this is probably getting close to um, being where I wanted it to be anyway. There's probably some um, additional value I can add up here in these uh, these hairs just to kind of like make it really stand out. Like there's this little bit here that kind of catches the light just so where it's not really black, but it looks blacker than some of the other areas. Just going over that multiple times like I'm doing now. Um, even though it's still the same exact marks that I was putting in the original, uh, in the beginning, that looked like a horrible mess. Now, because there's all these layers there, and you can see through it to other under layers and stuff, it looks nice. It looks like um, it's just additional detail. So that's really where the process is at this point. You come back and you go back over places, you darken in some areas. Um, I don't have one of my kneadable erasers, and I don't think I'll need it now, but you can use like a kneadable eraser to kind of lift up areas that are too dark. Just kind of work those values and so on. You can hear the cat in the background, like, wanting to get out. That's really why I keep it around the two-hour mark. I have pets that end up wanting to go out and get restless and stuff. But... I'll stay on for another 10 minutes or so, maybe. Just because I think that... I'll tell you the secret. The secret is, I really do the live stream until the point where I have a decent thumbnail to add. And then, then I'll end the stream and maybe work on it later. Right now, I think it's probably in the realm of a decent thumbnail, but... There's probably a little bit of reds I think I can introduce into this... Uh, this these orange areas. I think that'll look good. All right, so this hair over here is a mess, so let me focus on that for a minute. The other thing I like about pastel pencils is, like, just that sound, you know? Like, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but here, I just... It's not for everybody. Some people, like, they hear this sound, and they're just so put off by it, but to me, that pencil scraping across the paper and stuff, I love that. It's not the kind of shrillness you hear when you run your fingernails across a, like a chalkboard. Nobody likes that. If you like that, you're insane. Um, it's a different, softer kind of noise. I, but it's like, I don't know. If you're into like ASMR, like you can just, like I can record that and uh, I don't know, like put it on my phone or something and just listen to it at night. It'll, it'll put me to sleep because it's nice and relaxing. Like I just love hearing that. It's so weird. <laughs> Again, probably not for, for everybody, but for me, it kind of brings a little bit of comfort. And, um, you know, like that that's what ASMR is. You know, it's just audio comfort. So, just, I bottled that and put it in an app and put it up on the uh, app store and sell it. Yes, kitty, we're almost done. Chill out. Put kitty back there. Like, whoa, whoa. But I do like dog, doing dog fur because it really is just making marks over and over. Yeah, that's the way I want it to be. Um, hey, I appreciate that, Larry, and I appreciate that, Rome. Um, <laughs> that first picture could be his mug shot. <laughs> I like that comment. Um, hater, yes, uh, that that's the vibe I'd like to uh, foster here. You know, you can't control, you can't, you can't choose who comes and watches your show, right? Um, theoretically, some complete asshole can come in here and just start causing trouble and start yelling at people, start heckling me and everything, and I can handle that. Uh, like if he comes in and just talks crap about my art, I mean, I'm I'm prepared for that. I might. Uh, I, I take criticism very well. In fact, I, I might even agree. Um, but, you know, like if he comes in and starts ca causing trouble with others, then I, I'm going to have to block him or something like that or kick him out of the room or, or whatever. I haven't had to do that. And I, I count my blessings that I haven't. Uh, maybe it's because I don't have a lot of subscribers. It is really like close-knit kind of group here. And I think that's great. You know, everybody seems to get along. You guys are super awesome. Um, you guys seem to enjoy the, that it is low key and mellow, but yeah, that's absolutely the vibe that I, I like, hopefully you guys like it too. 
I mean, I can come in here and be one of those like crazy folks where I'm like yelling and stuff and just super animated and everything. I mean, you know, I, I it's not it's not really me. Um, I can. I do have like a limited knowledge of like the right words to use when it comes to like the technical side of it, just because I didn't go to art school or anything like that. Um, but I try to explain it in terms that you guys can relate to just because they are just my observations. Like there might be some technical term for what I'm doing at this moment. I have no idea, but what I'm doing is scratching a pencil across the paper and I don't know how technical that is. You know, I don't, I don't know why that would require more explanation than that. But I think it's a pretty pooch. It's looking pretty cool. I need a name for it because there is, I'm not doing this as a commission or anything like that. So he doesn't have a name. I don't want to call him Lassie. I think it could be a girl dog. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's a girl dog. I'm going to say it's a girl dog. I don't want to call it Lassie. I feel like that's a little lean. I'm going to call her... Not Lassie. <laughs> like... Yeah, the, the, I mean, it does look like a mugshot. <laughs> it looks like... It looks like this... Um, this, this collie got out and was roaming the streets or something. And, and the, the dog catchers were like looking for her and this is the only picture they had. <laughs> this is the artist. So like, I don't know, this dog stole somebody's like clothes off of the clothesline or something and they're trying to hunt it down and somebody goes to the police office and, and was like, yeah, this dog stole my, my dirty laundry or whatever. And they're like, well, can you describe the dog? Yes, I can describe the dog. All right, let's put you in touch with like a dog artist. And then this is what came out of that. And then this is the actual dog. I love it. It's the uh, it's the police sketch for the uh, not quite a mugshot because it's not photorealistic. It's the police sketch for it. I love it. Oh yeah, I'll I'll I'll, I'll set you as a moderator uh, hater. I can't do that like while the stream's going, but like if I remember to, if I don't remember to, just remind me and I'll I'll set you as moderator. Um, with great mod powers come great response. I don't know. So I really think I just need to really fluff up these ears. And I think there's some color on the outside of these ears I want to put in. So out here kind of goes into that sort of orangish brown color. And then kind of the outsides of these ears or the outside of this ear kind of same deal so I don't know. so there are ways there are ways to get more details into it that i'm not concerned about um because i think this is looking fine enough for what i want, wanted to accomplish it's a it's a little bit loose. It's not photorealistic and all of that jazz, but it's it's good enough. So a couple of different ways you can get um, some more detail into it so that it is photorealistic is one use the right paper. Again, this is just mixed media paper. It's good enough for this exercise, but if you're doing like if you're trying to do a photorealistic picture of a dog, you can um, you can use that pastel mat. That's going to save you some uh, trouble. You could get a proper soft pastel pencil. I don't have the white one here. I've got a harder white one, but if I go and try to, it just comes out muddy. That's no good. Um, another way is um, you can actually indent into the uh, paper with some like strands of hair so that those stay white as you're like coloring over it and not press in or blend as much as I'm doing. There's a couple of different ways you can do it. Or you can just spend the time, you know, like you spend 60 hours on this, you'll end up with something that looks photorealistic. It's already got starts of it. These eyes look pretty photorealistic already. Um, it's just getting all that fur in there. And that's the time consuming stuff when it comes to these uh, 
pet portraits. But you see, I'm jumping around the picture. A lot of people who work on photo realistic pictures, they work in one area and they just kind of like, they'll do this part and then they'll move out and do like another little section and stuff. I'm working all over the place. And um, that's how I get it done in a reasonable amount of time. Like we're pushing uh, three hours here, but you know, some people they spend a lot more time than that. And I just kind of like scratch prints across the page to um, kind of give the impression of fur. You can draw every single individual fur pe uh, piece of fur if you wanted to. I've got the philosophy slash style of suggestion and implying. So like these little lines here, these marks, they suggest fur. I don't need to spell it out to you. You know that there's fur there. It's not like I have to hold your hand through it or anything like that. But anyway, side by side, I think that this is a, uh, this is pretty good. Yeah, so I do think I'm going to kind of wrap it up. I'm not sure how much else I want to do to this tonight. I'll probably come back and revisit it. I can hear my dog and my animals behind me kind of getting restless, which means they probably need to go out. So I think I think I am going to call this done enough. And then I'll probably like kind of just stare at it throughout the night while I'm watching TV or something and be like, ah, that part's bothering me. I'll fix that part and, and so on. And then I'll, I'll post it up on the community tab when I'm done. So that you guys can uh, see what the finished product is. But you know, the swig of burning. This is the part where I evaluate it. So I'll sit back and I'm like, well, it's a good sketch. It's not where I want it to be, but it is better. It's an improvement on the original. Just having color would improve it. But I like the eyes. The eyes are so much better. I don't know what I was going with with these eyes. These almost look like human eyes. That's not right. Um, there's too much white on the sides and, and so on. There's not as much uh, value, like shadows and so on, uh, in the um, the fur above. So that doesn't look realistic. This looks way better. The nose looks better. Um, I need to add some more to get the ears really where I want it to be. And probably down here I can develop that a little bit more. But I'll do all that. Um, maybe make it stand out from the page a little bit more by adding some more. Like, this is all kind of flat. I can add a little bit of shadow in there so that it stands out a little bit better. But you guys don't need to sit through all that. I'll do all that offline. Um, so, yeah, I think I will wrap it up. Appreciate you guys hanging out with me on a Friday night. I know that you guys have, like, see, the dogs know when the uh, stream's up. You see them get all excited. Um, appreciate you guys hanging out with me on a uh, Friday night. Did I say Saturday? I meant Friday. Um, uh, on a Friday night, um, I know you guys have a lot of options on things that you can do on a Friday night, a lot of television you can watch. I appreciate that you guys are watching me. Uh, thanks, Tom. I appreciate that. Um, there's my co-pilot bear and that's Guinness back there and, uh, Archer over there in the corner wondering what's up with these dogs. Um, but yeah, that's it for me tonight. Uh, I'll finish it up. I'll post it up on the community tab. Appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Redemption round. Everybody's entitled to them. Like if you do a bad picture, uh, there's probably a couple of other candidates back here on the wall. Take them down, look at them, see what you can improve. Give it another shot. Why not? Right? Redemption's great. All right. So that's it for me. I'll see you guys probably on Tuesday. Um, unless I get bored and create something else between now and then. All right. Bye guys. See ya.